Welcome to the Planescape, where good and evil clash, where law and order maintain their delicate balance, the battleground for gods and monsters. Many heroes have written their legends in the stars of the Astral Sea, but these are not their stories. The Per Aspera and her crew, Kiana, Voss, Virla, and Danny, may not be the stuff of legends yet, but they're definitely rolling with difficulty. Hello, and welcome to our little planes hopping D&D campaign, folks. My name is Austin, your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, and as always, I am joined by my guests of the Githzerai getting guidance on their goals. Say hello, everyone. Howdy. That one it's was a so, rough one to start the season so with. It's been so long. What's up? I missed your voice. I don't <laughs> remember anything that happened in the last four seasons. Oh, uh, we're so, we're not going to re-record it, though. This is, your, this is the straight dope, folks. You're getting it. Uh, we're so excited to be back. Uh, because not only are we back for season five, we're back for the final uh, season in the Adventures of the Crew of the Paraspora. Last this one. is the finale season for this storyline, and who knows Ship's what's going to happen? I mean, I, I do because I've been writing it down, but like y'all don't. <laughs> yeah, no, don't the mind players win, by the way, guys. The mind players win. I do have yeah. that written down in my script. Is the mind players win? <laughs> yeah, we we usher uh, in a dark age, and then we're playing in post-apocalyptic planescape. We yeah. actually that was the she last uh, this campaign, campaign exactly that this... Wally and I played. It oh, ended really? In catastrophe. Yeah, Time is yeah, a flat We don't need circle. to get into that now. <laughs> Anyway, we're very excited to be back. We're very excited to get started. But before then, Sophia has a few words. I do, and it is Austin sends a pop fly hurtling into the outfield. Uh, it's just hey. it's going out there. I thought I'd bring back a classic, right? Uh, you know, you just running, running, running. Also, the Phil's lost recently. Like, not super recently. It was a while ago, but I'm still pretty bummed out about it. And I'm running, running, running out there to catch it and do a little ad read because this episode is brought to you by our old friends, World Anvil. Uh, Woo! World Anvil is a browser-based world-building tool designed to help you, the creator, write and world-build, all while keeping your work organized and in one place. World maps, calendars, customizable wikis, visual timelines, and more let you decide how best to build your world. And when you're ready to write, look no further than the built-in word processor. You can write your prose directly in World Anvil to keep every step of the process in one place. We all know TTRPGs are all about the power of friendship, and with real-time collaboration, you can work with your players or other creators on the same project. On top of all that jazz, World Anvil has an exciting feature called whiteboards. This visual canvas allows creators to freely draw out their ideas, adding diagrams, flowcharts, mood boards, and more. If you're a more visual creator, this feature is perfect for you. You can chart out character art, storyboard key scenes, insert funny copy part here, uh, or, you know, <laughs> whatever else you need to keep, make the story that you see Just in your mind come straight. to life. <laughs> That's why you, you always got to bracket it. You always got to bracket yeah. the notes. <laughs> interested of course you are and it yes. only yeah. gets better because for our listeners world anvil is offering a special discount and it's even more special than in previous seasons because world anvil has generously upgraded code plug uh for to 51 percent off a yearly membership that's over half so use code Whoa. plug p-l-u-g at checkout that's, actually, that's sick for 51 percent <laughs> off a yearly membership incredible you can get chronicles you can get timelines control. you can write in the app it's crazy uh yeah but uh thank you <laughs> Oh man, I'm, I'm I'm not ready for season five, guys. It's, oh, I'm it's, so ready. It's gonna be I'm a the shit most show. ready. Yeah. Uh, Nothing is gonna get fucked up. I'm gonna do so good. Gonna get the best grade in D and D. And to help you get the best grade in D and D, you should check out World Anvil and our special discount code plug P L U G. Thank you so much to World Anvil for uh, sponsoring today's adventure. And uh, with that, Sophia is running, 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 and she's just jumped right up there against the walls of the stadium. Uh, narrowly catching the ball before sending it hurtling back towards home base. Austin, take it away. This is the weirdest hockey game I've ever watched. <laughs> Do you hit anything other than pop flies? No, I, it's just fun to say the words pop fly. Uh, I'm not going to say okay. bunt, you know? Like, that's not as dramatic. <laughs> that's a kick. Tell me one more you thing about baseball. Me. Sophia, you, tell uh, me one when more I, thing besides a pop fly or a bunt. First of all, bold of you to assume it's not a softball. Also, uh, when I played softball, my go-to strategy was to bunt because I was really bad at hitting the ball if I had to swing the bat even a little bit. <laughs> Do they have pop flies in yes, cricket? Yes, yes. Cricket you were you were very bad. bad at hitting the ball, but you you were you must oh, be very sport. fast you, to then make it to first base, right? You, you were so, very fast. No, I played would, catcher, would so accurate? I just did a lot of squats. <laughs> she, was the, she was the Ichiro Suzuki of, of, of I I went up and down, and then I throw the ball in a straight line or catch it, and that was the whole. That's it. That's all Sophia ever had to do. When I was <laughs> wow, sports is so simple. 
Sports is pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, not like this game. All right, here we go. <laughs> D and D is a it, sport. <laughs> everything uh, we do is a sport. If you really scared. think about it, everything is a sport. Everything yeah. is a sport. It's been sports the whole time. With joy in your heart. I did Google to see Everything if there were any D and D sports for about two minutes We're before we started recording, and I couldn't find any. Oh, that's that's a rabbit hole you don't want to go. That'll take you down <sighs> forums. Things. It's always dangerous. I only know dragon chess. Okay, Austin, how do we win? <laughs> <laughs> when last we left our heroes. Oh God. The crew of the Prospera has faced many trials and tribulations to this point. Gone on many adventures had many close calls, but now their greatest undertaking stands before them. Having come face to face with an old enemy, they discovered moving plots, a conspiracy, and an allyship between multiple enemies from their past. The Mind Flayers, with the cooperation of one turncoat mechanite, dangers unfold before them and now having recruited some allies and gone to see the Gitzerai unlocked deep secrets of the planescape spoken to a god you rest after your battle with the inevitable just one night before here in the plain of limbo as you all rest before you are greeted to the new day and the audience that you were told you would have with the Getzerai. I would like to check in and see where everyone is at and how they're feeling. So, let's start with Virla. Virla. I know it's been like two months since we played, but get right back in the headspace and tell me where you're at. That's why we're doing this exercise. Yeah. how does Virla feel about his knowledge that he's being trusted by Mistra in this way. Not because, as she said, because she knows he can win, but because he will make the right choice when it comes down to it. Uh, I think honestly that's kind of like a secondary thought in his mind. Uh, the, 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 the second most priority thought in his mind is the fact that he did crack spell jamming technology. And he's very excited about what kind of like that was a weird pause there, uh, huh? He did crack <laughs> spell damning technology. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> uh, he's excited to see what like he's excited to. God damn it! What's happening? I'm sorry, continue. I, I, I apologize. Serious, serious. Uh, Where's your head at? <laughs> yeah, no. Like, uh, so, so he's like, re- he's he's really excited, and he's also super nervous because he knows that this is like a really important thing. It was locked away for a reason, and the guy who who's in charge of enforcing uh, it being locked away put up a pretty fucking good fight. Um, and this is the topmost priority. Uh, Virla felt kind of useless. Uh, any 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 justifications that this was a character uh, and an enemy specifically designed to nullify wizards is not registering to Virla at all. Um, he 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 was able to do what he sees as the bare minimum in order in order to keep the team alive and just barely at that he's very very happy that everyone is alive and relatively well but he's also just like he's like reviewing the 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 game tape wondering what he could have done better um and then he's also uh thinking about the fact that mr revealed herself to um the other three crew members and you know like in the moment everyone seemed pretty more or less on board but he he's kind of wondering now if uh second thoughts might emerge i suppose um now that they've had like a night to think it over because he like to Virla, this was a choice that he decided to do you know and i know that a lot of Virla's character development over the last few seasons has been learning to trust the crew and involve them in his uh, affairs and endeavors. But this is also a pretty big thing that Mistra has, uh, I suppose, tasked the Prospera. So he's more dedicated than ever to making sure that he is 
being a team player and not doing anything that might piss anyone else off. Kiana. How does Kiana feel about her charge from Mistra? Is it unfair, invigorating, or somewhere in between to be asked to be their, shor their sword and their shield? Um, conveniently, that was Kiana's plan already. Kiana's mostly hung up on how she really feels like she could have probably taken that inevitable if she'd just been, like, a little bit, like, beefier. Or, you know, like, like dodged a couple more of those hits. You know, it's just, she's, like, going back through it in her shake. head. I <laughs> I did just level up. I have 81 hit points now. It's not impossible. Um, uh, but, yeah, I think overall remarkably serene this is kind of like okay it's nice to have open confirmation of what's going on and just a very simple like this is the bad thing you're gonna hit it until it stops it's like great and oh a god told me to do that fan freaking tastic yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you know, kiana's never taken direction well but it's nice when the direction already lines up with what she was planning to do anyway it kind of it, it's a good feeling that she's never experienced before <laughs> Fantastic. Danny. How does Danny feel knowing she is going to have to be the one making the decisions right or wrong for the group in the near future? Is that empowering or terrifying? A little bit of both. <laughs> A little bit of both. Uh, I think, you know, Danny's not super, not unaffected by, but particularly into or convinced in any direction based on what a god tells her to or to not do. I think she's been a pretty by the by the reality around her person her whole life and so i don't know how much mistra's appearance specifically really changes the way that she was feeling in any way um but i with her recent promotion uh and newfound kind of control over where she's going and what she's doing and uh just like buy in to all of the adventures in a way um, I think she's in a much better place than she's been in in a lot of the previous seasons, and that's a weird thing to say, having just gotten her shit absolutely rocked by a giant inevitable. <laughs> to be fair, everyone got their shit absolutely rocked, so... We got our shit rocked together as a team, and that's really <laughs> invigorating. Uh, it's truly I, the beautiful power of friendship. I think her attention right now is kind of split in two ways. On the one hand, trying to be a good captain and like keep tabs on her crew and how they're all being affected by this, and... Uh, in as much of a way as Danny can, you know, reach out to those who need it. And uh, on the other hand, they did just crack spell jamming technology. And um, you guys know that Arthur meme, uh, the sign can't stop me because I can't read. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how <laughs> Danny feels about the magical laws of the universe. So th they they cracked it. They're gonna. This is gonna happen. Like we're <laughs> we've cracked it. Why should we not push this further? So I think I think she's got excitement tempered with some caution currently. Understood. Voss. How does Voss feel about being charged with supporting the group after his past with other people who have relied on him? Well, I don't think he's had gotten time to really think about it. Because, um, what, he was in Yuzgard for like a, a week or two, right? And then uh, he crashed the wedding, went to the Plane of Water, came back to the Plane of Water, back to said wedding, and then went back to the Plane of Water and then ended up in limbo. Um, so he hasn't really had time to really stop, uh, stole a, a mind flare ship, you know? So he hasn't really had time to just like stop and think about exactly what he's doing. And that's okay, that's that's fine. Um, it's a lot, he's, 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 this is probably the most he's ever like exerted himself. Like he's, he hasn't really gone on like adventures, adventures and for him to be lucky enough to have run into the group of Braspera, um, he's he's definitely glad that he has a sense of direction now, and he's happy to be a part of something um, a lot more positive than what he uh, grew up with. Um, so definitely a sense of gratitude, a little eepy, and uh, very true. <laughs> No one else has ever described Aren't running into the crew of the Paraspora as a positive experience, so thank you for that. <laughs> that <laughs> is very not lucky true. to we run into the crew of the Paraspora. Like, like I mean, it, it went as well as it could have for a gith running into a random crew of adventurers. You know, nine times out of ten, and it's a yeah. beat down. Um, it's, it's true. On either end. All right. Excellent. Well, you all rest off, sleep off the... Uh, 
beat down you received from the inevitable. <laughs> and then are awoken the next morning, question mark. Time doesn't really pass here in Limbo that same way. Uh, there's always, like, light appearing and disappearing outside in the just uh, churning chaos of this plane. But you are awoken uh, by a rap on the stairs down into the ship itself. Someone coming to collect you. Ugh. Danny rolls over, put you the pillow over her head. Deck already? <laughs> Enoch is waiting for you. I think that's you, Captain. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the jacket on, <laughs> trudge upstairs. The power move would be to show up in pajamas. <laughs> Trip over plug. I mean, Danny's like a shirt untucked. Like one of her pockets is inside out. <laughs> The bed head just oh, yeah. crazy. Half of her head is like <laughs> smoldering embers, and the other half of it is just like burning a lot more than it should. <laughs> I hadn't considered that. If you're a side sleeper and half your head just goes out. <laughs> What's that? Uh, Danny, you emerge uh, looking like a wreck. Uh, Enoch is standing there quietly, uh, non judgmental, uh, and just asks Are each of you ready? Are the others on the deck? Kiana probably sure, slept on the deck. Perhaps Let's you be real. would speak for them. <laughs> Captain. I, are they all ready? Yeah, they're ready. They're. I guess Sophia is asking, are they up here? Like, can I say, yeah, we're ready, and then we go, or do I have to go gather? <laughs> Where is everyone? Members? Everyone ready? I think once once uh, Virla hears Danny go and talk to Enoch, he's gonna like quickly, like. Give, give himself a quick polish, put on his cap and scarf, and, and join Danny on deck. Uh, Voss is going to wipe uh, a little bit of black blood on uh, the edges of his mouth and light right. All right. Ah, another day, another beat down. Let's go. Yeah, they're ready. Excellent, then. Come with me. He has, like, he's always very reserved, but there's kind of like this um, quiet anxiety about him as this is all going on. Uh, he leads you off the ship. You're stationed extremely close to the Citadel itself so that the, you know, churning chaos of Limbo doesn't just destroy your ship over, uh, while you sleep. Hmm. So it's a simple walk down the gangplank to the uh, entrance of the monastery where uh, two other guests, their eyes standing guard, let you in. Uh, this is a place familiar to some of you. Kiana has been here. Uh, when she came with Finbar to get the bonsai, has anyone else actually been inside of the Citadel as of yet? If Verla needed to go inside to collect Aster. Uh, yeah, so Verla has been in here as well. Uh, so Danny is the first time, uh, Damn, Voss, right. this is the first time you or <laughs> any, I'm not any into, other uh, Gith Yankee have been inside here. That. Wait, are they letting you uh, in? Because last yeah, time they, they didn't. Him in. Wow correct last time they did now they do <laughs> they uh there's a, a guard that comes behind you guys and follows you as you walk through adamantine so that vanta black walls all over the place the strongest material in the entire planescape forming this and the entire the, the foundation the entire construction of this citadel itself uh if this were a thing that could exist on any other world it would be a price like perhaps literally priceless configuration uh, but with enough willpower, you can manifest such things in this world. You go past the many mon uh, meditating monks who are maintaining their control on the monastery through Limbo. There are many monks training. Uh, but more than anything, there are lots of Gitzerai who are currently preparing to be dispatched. They operate in adventuring parties called Rachma. That's their word for it. Um, and they are currently, many of them, joining with their Rachma, and you see, like, one group uh, grab hands and plane shift out as they're off to go investigate something. This is, there's a, this quiet fever about the place. They are, re uh, you know, reserved in general, but this is an important, this is, an important time is like a, a, a huge understatement <laughs> to, the, to the matter. So, this is, uh, there's, there's a lot going on. Enoch brings you into a larger uh, kind of amphitheater, kind of like near, near nearing the center of the citadel itself. Uh, the whole thing kind of wraps around in this bizarre 
shape that you can uh, walk all around it and kind of like circle in on itself. It's almost impossible gravity, just like um, just like uh, Sigil. You guys, though, move from the outer ring into the middle, into a larger chamber, where you uh, see a Githerai who you, I think, have met just once before. This is Dehelma, who was the one who brought the Githerai in the finale of season one. Mm. Uh, they were too late, but she's the one who arrived to help you guys out and who took the monks back with her. She mm. is uh, a, a powerful Githerai. She has the ability to plane shift. And she's wearing um, the, the like, red dragon scale vest, which, Voss, you would immediately recognize as being a trophy of having killed a Gith Yankee knight. Hello, mate. <laughs> uh, looking uh, quite fancy over there. She looks... She looks sternly at you, Voss, and then she looks at Enoch... And there's this, there's like an entire conversation in just like a moment or two of un, like without speaking, where she is like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "It's not really up to me." Uh, kind of like going back and forth. He's like, "Look, and if you don't want him here, like it's up to you." And then she kind of relents because she knows that you've all been called in here for a reason. While that's happening, just... uh, Danny will stare at uh, Voss and try to have a similar conversation, like, "What are you doing?" And I don't think any of it's communicated even a little bit. <laughs> I'm just imagining Don't like blow if, this for me. Like if Voss acts up, one of the monks like flexes slightly and just a cartoon hole opens <laughs> up under him. <laughs> just drops him out of the city. Get a raise. Just ejects him into limbo. Um <laughs> Voss clocks the uh, the stare from Danny. Right, right, right. Keep my mouth shut. Right. Let's go. She looks at she looks at the four of you and says, Have you been informed why you have been brought here? Have we? I think we have a guess, but I don't know if we've been formally told. What you're about to do, where you're about to venture now, is the most closely guarded secret of the Gitzerai. You are brought here only by invitation of the Menyar Og, and your decorum is expected under threat of a fate far worse than you could conjure. She looks at Voss. <laughs> Am I understood? Ah. Uh. This is practically nostalgic for me. <laughs> aye, aye. Uh, uh, Carolyn Dawn. Boss also <laughs> nods. <laughs> Very well. Yeah, yeah, the monastery with the dark secret, the threat of death. Yeah, yeah, we've all seen it. <laughs> <laughs> the time knife. We've all heard of the time knife. <laughs> you all agree, she says. This is against my better judgment, but it is not our place to question. Come with me. She leads you just across. Enoch stands and watches, uh, puts a little hand on Kiana's shoulder as you walk away, and he says, very quietly, just to you, Kiana, mm -hmm. good luck. Thank you. You're brought across the chamber. Two huge doors, this time made entirely out of gold. Delicate filigree running through them. Big ring handles uh, Dehelna grabs one, pulls it open the room inside dimly lit, she gestures for each of you to enter walk right Close on in. in yep Yep. you will be released when he is done speaking with you say what now? good luck excuse me? The door. she closes the door behind you and leaves all of you alone in this room here at the heart of the citadel. The chamber oh, is fuck. small, modest in size, considering the grandeur of the things you've seen before. The line of sight here is broken by many oh. columns and arches that What's fill the room, lining the walls. It is lit by dim lanterns that illuminate various vapors that hang in the air, creating strange scents and casting strange shadows. As you enter, you see that against the far wall, two braziers, larger than the rest, standing on the floor, uh, stand on either side of an upright golden sarcophagus. The lid to this sarcophagus is nowhere to be found, and you see the inhabitant, resting inside the body of a Githzerai, clad in white robes, a long beard stretching down past almost to his navel. 
His eyes are closed, his skin sunken, dry and tight, almost mummified. By all accounts, he appears to be dead. The lights dim, and a feeling none of you have felt before comes over you. It's like drowning, but only in your mind. An oppressive downward force on your brain, suffocating your thoughts as water would suffocate your your uh, would snuff your breathing, pushing down, making it difficult to think, difficult to perceive the things around you. And for a few long seconds, there was only this crushing, alien, disorient, disorienting sensation. And then, cutting through it, you hear the voice. Welcome, heroes of many worlds, denizens of nowhere and everywhere. The eyes of the mummy Gitsera in front of you open, and they are rolled back in the head, unfocusing, but the eyelids open. I have awakened to know you. For I have seen that your involvement in the next battle of our long war is the piece that tips the scales, that shifts our place on the fulcrum from defeat to victory. Should your actions this day hold true to my sight, then I shall guide you to assured victory. But first, the weakness among you must be expunged. God yes. damn it, we're gonna do much of fucking food yourself quest. Yes! Yeah. yes. Mental uh, Genjutsu. The, the trial by combat! <laughs> Mental trial by combat. Face our worst fears, we buddy. Gotta fight in Ooh. our minds. Fight our- you, all, you all hear this, but it is being spoken directly yeah. to Voss. I'm the same way that you can tell in yeah. a conversation. Whoa. That, that everything you heard there, you heard it was spoken to all of you. This next part is spoken directly to Voss, so all of you can hear it. The same way you could hear anyone speaking in a mm-hmm. conversation, but tell they are speaking to a person specifically. It's a strange feeling because it's all appearing in your mind, and yet it's it's an, it's immediately knowable to you. Do you know who I am? child of the pronouncement of two skies well i only know one other person like you so uh i figure you're her better half <laughs> oh it's not really an insult if you think about it he's the better half i, I don't know enough about get lord to know if that's completely unfounded or if just that's accurate <laughs> anyone want to make a quick history check there's absolutely no way I know this. <sighs> You're a little I know you can make one. <laughs> yeah. What does Noir know about this? Not a lot. Sophia vaguely. It's been a while since I played this. Baldur's Gate, yeah. so. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, natural thirteen nice. plus eight. There we go. Makes Woo-hoo. twenty-one. All right. You've learned some things about the Gith, Githyanki, and Githzerai since you've known uh, of their importance to you. The pronouncement of two skies refers to the moment that the Githzerai and the Githyanki, when the, when the moment when the Gith became the Githzerai and the Githyanki, there was a great leader who led them, uh, who led the Gith out from under the shackle, uh, uh, freed them from the shackles of the Mind Flayers. Her name was Gith, and they have taken the name of their people in honor of her. Following this, there was some time of fighting Mind Flayers that was largely agreed upon. There were no distinct sects. But Gith journeyed to Hell on the advice of one of her followers, of one of her, her like lieutenants, one of the, the few people she trusted most, uh, a powerful uh, mage by the name of Vlakith who suggested she uh, bargain with devils for the power to expunge the Mind Flayers. She did not return. uh, Instead, a 
uh, Red Dragon appeared to signal the uh, agreement between Gif and Tiamat, that Red Dragons would be in service of them. Vlokith took this as her moment to ascend to what she believed to be her rightful place at the head of the Gif. Another one of the uh, the most trusted of original of the uh, leader Gif was a Gif by the name of Zerthamon, who believed that they were heading down a dangerous path. That this um, that it was noble to seek to kill and destroy the Mind Flayers, for they were evil, but that it was uh, poisonous to the the people of Gif to pursue their destruction at all costs and to fall into what he believed to be cult-like tendencies under Vlakith. They fought, and the pronouncement of two skies was Zerthamon's assertion that though they walked the same uh Though they walked the same world, they looked up and uh, saw two different skies, that there was two different realities they believed they lived in. And that was the Sundering, the creation of the Gith Yankee, uh, which I believe translates to Children of Gith, and the Gith Zerai, who take their name from Zerthamon. Ooh. Zerthamon died subsequently, I believe, uh, in a fight against the Gith Yankee. And his right hand was a very powerful psionic by the name of Zareth Menyar Ag Gith. That is the millennia old being you see before you now. The near immortal ruler of the Gith Sarai, who here in Limbo, where the power of mind is far greater than the power of matter, has slowed his aging so that he may continue to be a a guide and leader to his people for as long as possible. Here he is, in whatever small way, awakening from his, uh, reanimating, awakening from his slumber to speak to each of you. Uh, that is the context for him asking Voss, child of the pronouncement of two skies, do you know who I am? And when you say, I've, I've known your better half, um, he responds again, in all of your heads, but specifically to Voss. On many battlefields, in many ways, I have known your queen, Vlakith. We hold many of the same principles, but her way is the way of power, of corruption, of fear and hatred. It is the way that we do not dare tread. I see more of you than even you can see of yourself, child of the pronouncement of two skies, deserter to the Lich Queen. You are chosen. You were chosen as an egg, weakest of your kin, to be devoured by a fungus that sought to reach its mycelium deeply into a world not its own. You were chosen by that world, by the very heroic domains, divinely powered to withstand the affliction. And now you stand before myself, ruler of your hereditary enemy, in need of my boon if you hope to beat our true foe. Tell me, would be Shasal Ku, what do you continue to fight? Why do you continue to fight when it is no longer yours? When it slowly kills you? I was raised to do a lot of things. Things I'm not entirely proud of. And I've learned to let them go. The only thing that matters is that I continue to be a hero. And to do the right thing. With or without your help. I'll do that. But your, your help would be appreciated. <laughs> your commitment is impressive. Your openness to aid, equally so. Should I choose to elevate you 
to give you the power to defeat our true foes. First, you will need to conquer the affliction within yourself. Damn, the boss season just started. Journey with me now. <laughs> you feel the entire chamber begin to rumble. Bits of it, you have never experienced a plane shift like this. The Bits ship. of the world around you fall away in chunks. No, the like, ship! Uh, like you're standing on... um. <laughs> like it's like video yeah. game terrain that like falls away when you stand on it for too long. Like bits yeah. start to fall away, and as they do, other bits rise up and like fill in their space very quickly. Uh, and you hear in all your minds, space is but an illusion. And he rips all of you from limbo to Easeguard. You appear. The ship. In an Our equally ship. dim chamber, no longer comforting and filled with light and vapor, though. Uh, it was comforting. Wet. You can hear dripping from somewhere deep in these caverns. Slimy bits of algae uh, and bioluminescent fungus crawling up the wall, illuminating the whole thing. You gotta Boss. stop doing this to me, man. Boss, you recognize the dim... Uh, uh, eerie green glow of this chamber. You have been here once before. <laughs> you know those days when you're uh... like, this might as well happen. <laughs> nice. Sophia doesn't have to get any new assets. <laughs> you guys all, like, your feet come underneath you and there's this, the, the weird, you've never experienced a sensation quite like this before. Like being plane shifted but piecemeal. Here, your sword fell. Your blood spilled. Your corruption spread. Here, your corruption may be defeated. Vas, I would like to ask you, as we go into this challenge, is this going to be a challenge of Vas's inner strength? Or is this going to be a challenge to Voss's dedication to the group? Both. There is no right or wrong answer. This is simply a roleplay decision. There are different... The the encounters are different. And the reward, subsequent rewards different. But there is no right or wrong path. Is this a test of Voss's ability to... Uh, handle himself to like to be strong and be a warrior or is this uh, a test of Voss's commitment to these other three if this is happening here um mm -hmm. this is kind of where his, his his inner strength sort of failed so he's, he's he's for the first time i guess you guys all see this this smiling veneer just completely melt away you notice how pale and how frail uh, oh. and thin he is as he sort of stands in this chamber once again. Um, this is where I learned that sometimes just being myself isn't enough. So this is why I need you guys here. No, I, I need my friends here. So we'll, we'll do that here. Aww. So is right, this we'll a test of inner strength? This is, this is a test of dedication? We're going to need <laughs> new art for buff Voss after we overcome this. <laughs> All right. Just grows a big mane of hair. You hear, very well. I may separate the corruption from you, but only you may defeat it. You watch as Voss, you feel, and everyone else watches, as the armor that is adhered to Voss begins to painfully pull away. It is buried deep within him, yes. suction to him. And Voss, you feel it being ripped through you uh, as it's shredded from the back, pulled off like, uh, uh, like skinning something, pulled off painfully, forcefully, and then it's cast into the center of the room. As it does, it begins to convulse and let out a horrible squeal, like sound, uh, and it begins to flail out. It summons all of the strength that has been dr uh, draining from you for these many long years, and 
you face before you the fungal symbiote behemoth. Holy! It is a okay creature, I believe. I got so much I'm, bigger on the. I guess back. I'm going to unattune from <laughs> the. I'll unequip and unattune from it. Cause I. Yeah, okay. You are unequipped well, and I have an AC of 11, that. ladies and gentlemen. Just letting you know. Oh, God! <laughs> Squishier than Danny. All right. Jesus um, H I'm going to drop Christmas. everyone in. I'm going to drop everyone into the combat. Uh, you guys can place yourselves wherever you would like, though, uh, within this uh, map here. You know, he, you plane shifted you to the middle of the room, but this is, I allow you to go anywhere go you would like in the room. go for a four-corner situation. We all, just, we all just take a quadrant. I was not ready right. for today. <laughs> I'll be here. Could I get everyone to please roll initiative? Wow. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk this thing to death. Come on, man. Come on, Virla. Do something. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> Poking Virla with a stick. Yeah, Do something. Do something. <laughs> God damn it, Virla. Mar, you gotta get... Can we just, like... How do we cleanse your dice? <laughs> I <laughs> don't know. Put them out under the full moon. We're going to PAX Unplugged yeah. midway through recording season five, and I do think that we all of us need to individually buy <laughs> yeah. Noir a different dice set, because statistically, at least one of them has to roll well. <laughs> Aw, that, that's kind of cool. It's got a, yeah. got a lot of, like, and my sword energy, yeah. you know? <laughs> I'm going to say this. Me and my friends from California have been playing, like, the poker activity on, on our Discord server a lot. And yeah. I've been getting consistently for, like, the last three or four days very mediocre hands. And then the hands that I do get that are good, uh, <laughs> the community cards do nothing to support it. So I kind of feel that this is generally kind of a running trend where... Uh, <laughs> Maybe the luck okay. doesn't always turn out like that, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Does Philly have an abundance of witches we could get to break any curses that may be on you? Uh, we got a lot of sports superstitions, so I'm sure we could find somebody. Last year, the Flyers were at PAX Unplugged. I bet we could ask them. I, make a warlock I don't think that'll ready, go the way you think it's going to yeah. go. I do like black, and my favorite number is 13. That doesn't have anything to do with it, does it? <laughs> All right. So, for initiative, we have Kiana at 22. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Voss at 17, Danny at 16, <laughs> Virla at 7. But kicking off the combat oh, with a total of shit. 25. God Fuck. damn it. The fungal symbiote behemoth. This thing seems to unfold unnaturally large from the what was like kind of carapace, like this like chest plate armor thing, just kind of like unfolds and begins to squirm about bits of mycelium, like flip out picture venom symbiote it's just like expanding and like grabbing I onto rocks and pulling itself up and out for a reason <laughs> expanding out uh and it is going to uh it's yeah it's gonna kill all you guys uh here we go so multi-attack uh the, the uh symbiote makes four attacks using vine trip throttle yeah or both. yeah how about just so. one to start you know as a treat as a little appetizer <laughs> Let's let's all start. Let's just do one vine uh, vine rip uh, against each of you guys. So here we go. Ooh, First up, uh, My against Voss. To the chef. That's a twenty-four. Yeah, that, that's gonna hit. <laughs> against. Are you sure? Hold on, wait. I gotta I gotta declare I gotta declare as I go. I can't just roll and then and then say. Uh, okay, so that was Voss first against Virla. We got um, ooh uh, a nineteen. Uh, that would hit, but I will. Do shield nice. to negate that. That's nice, nice. Right. Uh, against Kiana, we got a dirty twenty. That'll hit. And against Danny, oh wow, I've rolled under ten for almost all these. Um, uh, for Danny, it's That's going to be a seventeen to hit. Uh, that would just hit, but I will use. Or it's like one of my C, but I'll use my reaction to cast shield to uh, not get hit by that. <laughs> So the two casters are like, oh no! And the two <laughs> tanks just get... <laughs> At this point, so many fungi have attacked us that Danny is just like trying to keep her boots clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boots. I'm just glad we don't have All to right. rust mold in this combat again. <laughs> Alright, Voss, you take 20 bludgeoning damage. Fun. And uh, 11 piercing damage. Yeesh. Okay. <laughs> And you are pulled into the space of the uh, the fungal symbiote. Uh, Kiana, mm. you're going to take... Lay it on me. 16 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And... Oh, that's quite high. 
uh, 18 piercing damage. Whoa. Phew. Okay, I'd and like to use my- And you are also pulled well, uh, into uh, its space. We might need to litigate that because I'd like to use one of my four telekinetic reprisals. Uh, so uh, I'm using my reaction uh, how, to- How close do you have to be to the creature when it hits you? 10 feet. And were you within 10 feet? I just moved you. I'm within 10 feet. <laughs> okay. I didn't like metagame that. I was just like, I should be kind of close. Um, no, you would pick 10 feet because you know what the range of your arms are. That seems yeah. reasonable to me. Um, it's it, Also, it's your character also knows how far your telekinetic reprisal goes. That's not metagaming. Yeah. That's okay, Kiana's cool. battle prep. Great. Yeah, that's okay, the opposite awesome. of metagaming. Uh, it needs to make a strength saving throw DC 17. Oh, yeah. It's very weak. Well, you know, anything is possible. DC 17, exactly. Okay, great. Uh, well, I rolled nine damage. It takes half that and isn't pushed 10 feet away from me, uh, but it still gets to take that tasty four damage. Okay, hey. Every little bit helps. It's on the ropes. So I got pulled closer. Am I grappled or have I just been yanked? Uh, you are not grappled. Great. Yeah, so it just made one of each of those attacks. Uh... And that is going to end its very first turn. That brings us to Kiana. Great. I would like to not get that hit that hard again. So for my first trick, I am going to rage, uh, which yeah. is a bonus action. Uh, so now I can attack, which I will Sickly do. green glow is replaced by brilliant amber as your spectral uh, body yep. forms, and then your like ghostly ancestors begin to flicker in and out of yeah. existence around you. The funny thing is I don't even have my arms out at this point, so like it's just the ghosts. Uh, I'm going yeah. to do a, I get two attacks. So I'm gonna do two silver sword attacks. Conveniently, it moved me close enough. It is, because it is so large mm -hmm. and because it is a, like a big, like there's lots of holes in it, you can occupy its space. So this is a creature you can move through. This is also a creature that can move through you guys. Great. Uh, I think I'm just rolling this flat? Am I flanking it? I don't think uh, I'm flanking it. So this it. creature is immune to flanking. Oh, clever. Okay, so just rolling it straight? Condition immunity yeah. flanked. Yes, cool. you will be rolling straight, yeah. unless you want to go reckless. You want to go reckless? Uh, sure. You have rolled the first one now, so... <laughs> well, I rolled one die. Uh, I can always add a okay. second. Yes. So yeah, let's just do reckless. Uh, okay. <laughs> cool. Well, it's a 17 to hit. Uh, do, 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 do. 17 will hit. Good. I was kind of hoping. I rolled, for the record, on the first die, it was a 6, and on the second, it was a 5. Uh, so that's 2d6 plus 7 slashing. Uh, oh, okay, cool. 18 slashing on the first hit. Okay. Second hit, 24 to hit. Uh, mm -hmm. Just kind of assuming at that point. Uh, all right, that's only 14 slashing damage on the second. Okay. Not bad. Yep. Um, I use my bonus action to rage, uh, and if I move away, I assume it gets an attack of opportunity, but that would use up its reaction before anybody else goes. Uh, Might be good. Where yeah, is... I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up just a skosh on the assumption that it's got some kind of horrible AoE or something that I don't want to be in the middle of. It's just boop, boop. Okay. Cool. So it is going to, as you move out of its space, it's going mm -hmm. to use Throttle, which is a reach of zero. So as you start to try to leave it, that is when it uh, makes its reaction attack against you. It's an attack of opportunity. Uh -huh. This is a melee weapon attack, which you were just reckless, so it is at advantage against you. Lay it on me. Um, that's a 30 to hit. <laughs> I think you just got me with that yeah. one. Yeah. Holy. Oh my God. Okay, here we go. Uh, you take 21 points of piercing damage, have to 10. Have to 10. Uh, you become entangled. While oh, entangled, the, the target is restrained and moves with the symbiote. Uh, can't see outside their space, uh, and you will take damage at the start of each of your turns. Ah, I've been symbioted. I'll just move myself back into its space, I guess. Uh, yep, right there. there. So as you, you watch as Kiana does like a obliterate, like a pretty damaging couple swipes to this thing. Uh, it's, you know, it's tough, but its AC is not terribly high. Mm -hmm. um, you swipe through, you gas just a whole bunch of it. It starts to reconnect, and then as you back up, the mycelium wraps around you. You feel the filaments dig into you. Oh. It pulls you back, and you are currently uh, all those things I just said. Great. Let me just add that tasty condition. Uh... Yep, restrained. So that's the main uh, one, is you're restrained. Restrained. Cool. Correct. Voss. Voss. 
Boss. He sees uh, Boss. Uh, Kiana's attempt to escape this thing, and I'm currently in its space. Um, so uh, we're gonna start with uh, we're gonna start with the Misty Step. Um, <laughs> I use my Misty Step to get thirty feet Shaka out of here. Kong. Yeah, I. Poof. Yeah, that's that's gonna be good enough. Thirty feet is here, um, and then. We're gonna move my movement. He's got 30 feet. I'm gonna move right up next to Danny. And you, you kind of see him. He, he's kind of hunched over, haggard, dragging his sword on the ground. Um, and he places a hand on sort of Danny's shoulder and he's he's cold. He's he's like freezing cold. He's Peaks, literally had all the life it's drained when out of um, him. When you put something, when you've touched like a hot thing and a cold thing and then yeah. both of the things are more intense. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ow. Uh, all right, boss. Uh, I'm not doing too hot, but uh, I'll, I'll do what I can. Um, I cast a spell this turn, so I can't really do much for my action. Um, he's going to channel the coldness within him, and he's going to lip point a hand and shoot a ray frost um, over okay. at um, the symbiote. It's like, uh, just, just give me a second. Uh, okay, that's a 17 to hit. 17 will okay. hit. Fantastic. Um, and we'll start with, that's 11 points of cold damage. Okay, it is resistant, so it will take 5 points of cold damage. Of course, damage. It, is. Of course <laughs> it is. Uh, that was action, bonus action, and movement. Um, that's all he's got for the first round. Danny. You watch as Kiana's just, like, getting, like, mummified up by this thing, like... Little strands are going, like, across the eyes, like, over the mouth, and, like, holding on to, like, pulling her arms apart so that she can't, like, get a good grip on her sword. The thing occupies a big old space, and Kiana's just a little guy. If I were to... <laughs> fireball it? Fireball from an <laughs> angle at which it is not hitting Kiana, <laughs> could I potentially hurt it and not her? Or is that anywhere that it that is, is going to hurt possible. her? That is absolutely possible. The only... The only thing, nope, you could definitely hit it and not her. The only trouble is that you are, uh, the only thing you have to make sure you do is you are, the center of it is in the room. You can't, you know, mm -hmm. place the center of the fireball outside the room. And you need to be able to see where you're placing the center. Because it's like, yep, you're yep, shooting yep. a straight line, you know, you're shooting a, a ball of energy that explodes, basically. So, as long as Danny can see it. I good. would only take half damage. I do have evasion. I, if I can just not do damage <laughs> to you, though, maybe that's a good idea. I would appreciate not getting You would roll the dexterity at disadvantage because you're restrained. I would, but I'd still, you know, if I failed, I'd still only take half. I'm just saying. Uh, Danny's gonna, like, kind of roll on her heels a little bit and think about casting a fancy spell she picked up. She's like, no, 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 no. Let's wait on that one. And then she's gonna run. One, two, three, four. Uh, and kind of take aim at uh, one of these mushrooms in the corner here uh, and think to herself yeah I can hit that <laughs> uh, and <laughs> right fireball thoughts uh, right over here I'm gonna cast a fireball behind this uh, right it's kind of off to this opposite side of Kiana on this fungal guy Oof. okay so that's a dexterity saving throw yes it is DC 18 this thing can't be that dexterous, right? He is large, but he has a great dexterity because he's made up of a bunch okay, of little right. filaments. He also has supernatural resistance. Advantage on saving throws against powers, spells, and other supernatural effects. Boo. Oh, he still takes half damage. Advantage. Uh, that is a 21. That will save, but he still takes half damage. Um, Sauce is weak. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's 8d6 plus a d8 from my artificer uh, little tool. Is the D8? The D8's halved also, I think, if he fails. The whole damage will be halved. But it doesn't resist fire, so it's only <laughs> halved, not quartered. Great. It's good to know. Believe, believe it or not, the big plant-type creature does not resist fire. 37 points of fire damage. Have it, too. Whatever. <laughs> uh, was that 18? 18. Mm -hmm. 18? Yeah. All right, so we got numbers on the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always down. All right. 
Voss, I think you got to punch place your problems. The stark elimination. <laughs> I know I usually keep telling people to stop punching things to solve problems, but I think actually we need to do that this time. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> this doesn't feel <laughs> yeah, very Yeah, this one kind of needs to be guys. killed with fire, actually. <laughs> Mom's giving us permission. Let's go. <laughs> I'm not your goddamn mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like a battle in the center of the... Nope, it's not a metaphor. Not a metaphor, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be some sort of test of character. Huge monster beats the shit out of you. Ah, oh, corruption. What, what kind of, what kind of like shady background is it? Nope, it's actual fungus. Holy <laughs> shit, it's actual Just fungus. Just literally mold. <laughs> Man, this is uh, this season, uh, this campaign has really been. Even though Zuktmoy not the main <laughs> bad guy, this yeah. has been such a such an opportunity for me to pull out my favorite fucking shit. I think uh, that it was like a lot of like a, a lot of arch fiends and like demon lords have the element of like like oh the bad boy like sexiness thing, but like Zuktmoy is just so gross that we're all just like eh, you know <laughs> yeah so there's like, a no, reason, reason she was wiped up to uh Dweebalex. Ugh. prince of slime nah. uh virla what does Wait, the chosen of mistra do in this moment you... <laughs> he's gonna cry <laughs> you said that he's resistant to like all spell magic he damage? has he has he has advantage on saving throws against spells so he has uh this is from Flea Mortals by MCDM. Oh, of course. That's the hey, okay. uh, so uh, there's there's a, there's a couple special tags in here. One of them is supernatural resistance. That's basically magic resistance, but it also works against psionic powers. So, I see. luckily none of you are, uh, are uh, psionics. So. Excuse you. <laughs> well, you are, but you're not a psi. You don't do like psionic attacks. You have psionic muscles. It's the oh, difference resist, between though. being psychic and being like <laughs> a Psy Professor X. You know from. Oh. The yeah, you're. Yeah, Psylocke. exactly. Yeah, Psylocke. I believe. Whatever. Cyclox is the is the Ace Attorney mechanic. <laughs> no, no, Cyclox is the guy who Cyclops takes over the X Men the, when the... Xavier's out of. Control. The only ones that the only X Men yeah, movies yeah, I I've watched. Yeah, the only combination of the, of Scott Summers and Cyclops. The OG trio of like X Men, X Men Two, X Two, and The Last Stand, and I don't think she shows up in any of them. So uh, whatever. No, she, uh, they put her in Apocalypse though. Um, she yeah. was all right. She was like one of the Horsemen or something. Something. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. so so she the way that it's wouldn't matter less. <laughs> the way that it's worded gives it resistance to magic and psionic. Uh, it, it just gets advantage it, it on the saving throws. It gives advantage on the saves. It doesn't automatically resist. It's the same thing as magic resistance, the trait, which gives it okay, advantage. Okay. Against I understand. The I understand. All right. Um, the second question. I know that normally um, you can only cast a spell uh, with an action and then a cantrip as a bonus action. You can't do. You can't double up and do two spells. Um, Correct. If I were to use my action to cast spiritual weapon and then a bonus action to immediately hit with spiritual weapon, is that fair game? Uh, it is a spiritual weapon an action to cast or a bonus action though. It's it was a bonus, bonus action. action. Oh. So I would be using my action to cast spiritual weapon. Mm -hmm. But no, you'd be using your bonus action. It, you said it's a bonus action to cast, right? And then you can it's use a bonus your action, action to, to cast. Yeah, but it's another bonus action to use it to attack. So I was wondering if. Like so, the the order here would be: you cast it with a bonus action, and it attacks when it comes out, and then you'd have an action if you wanted to do a cantrip or something else. Okay, gotcha. I can't. I feel like this is the thing well, I should know. What are you trying to do? Basically, using a bonus action, using in the, like the action slot, um, using a bonus action in the action slot. I guess. Yeah. No. Is, is yeah. No. Okay. But it's all right. Yeah, it work. It works out better for you this way, action economy wise. You can't Fair swing enough. twice if that's what you want, but you can still do a lot of other stuff with your action. I guess the question is, do I want to do that? Because <laughs> I can only I can only switch out wizard spell damage. Um, so I think. But it'll be it'll be a bonus action you have up for the rest of the fight, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is true. Um, no, that's fair. So I'll get it up. All of my cantrips are melee range, so I uh, my damage cantrips rather. So I'd have to get up close in order to use that and then i'd effectively just be wasting an action well there's always dodge if you want to well kiana has already given oh well, what does dodge do does dodge also give you advantage does it i, I think it might give you advantage on uh, dex saves yes yeah yeah uh doo -doo -doo. uh and you make the series saving throws with advantage so yeah um you know there's there's always dodge there's right. uh there's there's help things like that <laughs> so you know okay yeah, I, I think, partially because I want to play with my new toy. <laughs> uh, as a bonus action, you see Virla um, kind of make a gesture as if he's trying to, like, 
kind of like that magic trick where magicians like produce a wand out of thin air or whatever. Uh, kind of the same deal, but like he elongates it further than a wand, and you see a spiritual spear, um, but stylized to look like it's made Hell out of yeah. lightning. Very cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And uh, that's pretty badass. He'll right, toss it. So I'm going to use conjure. I'm going to use Bing in the meantime, <laughs> and yeah, I can conjure it anywhere within 50, uh, 60 feet. So I'm actually going to put it down a bit away from me. Not exactly. Not not like where it would immediately hit from my line. And then I get to hit. <laughs> I get to, I get to yeah. roll. Yeah. Go ahead and roll the hit with your spell. Your uh, your wizard. Oh, sorry, your cleric modifier. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is pretty good. Plus seven. Oh, uh, I I am upcasting this. I need to say that. Okay, you're nice. casting at the fourth level. Oh, I am. Come on. Sweet. So that's two d eight, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fourteen plus seven, twenty one. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, definitely hits. Ooh. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so it's force damage. It's been so long since we played D and D, you guys. <laughs> Gotta get the dust off the dice. Never skip dice day. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> two ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. Don't you have a thing where you can like maximize damage or no? It's just thunder. But it's it's it's, yeah. it's, yeah. Thunder. it's mm -hmm. lightning or thunder, and this is force. You gotta exercise yeah. your dice. <laughs> How Bro, does that just... work? Huh? <laughs> never skip. You never skip dice day, dude. You just got. <laughs> All right. Well, All right, four, so that's four, four points of damage. Points of force damage. Right, so I believe. Luckily, it does not resist force, and thus having it to two. <laughs> cool. It takes the whole four. What would you like Great. to do for an action? <laughs> um, as an action, I'll, I'll 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 dodge. Basically, I need to I need to get my stuff up before I can actually do some stuff, which is basically right. next turn. Hell yeah. So here we go. It's the Fungal Symbiote Behemoth's turn. <laughs> so first is a bonus action. It's going to use your mine. Uh, it's Excuse going to move me. an entangled creature, which is Kiana, uh, to a uh, space uh, within it. So it's just going to move you from the outside all the way to the inside. Hey. Oh, no. It will take our really bonus. get you on the inside, so it's it's really hard for you to do anything. Uh, and then it's going to use, from life, lightning. What? Uh, at least mm. one creature must be entangled to use this action. Each hey. creature entangled... Must make a D. Uh, please make a Constitution saving throw. Huh. huh. I don't sure. have enough D10s for just this. You're good at those. You're good at what those. What right? was that you just said? I said I don't have enough D10s for this. That's uh. not a good sign. A con. <laughs> save. Uh, I believe she has a plus two to Constitution saving throws. I do. I do have a plus two to con. And I rolled good. a don't 15, worry, so 15. it's a 17. Uh, a 17 will not oh, succeed. Be a lot of God damn it! <laughs> Do I have a thing? Oh, no, no, the monk thing is just for it to hits. Okay, well, whatever. Correct. I got in uh, one good round. <laughs> the glass cannon is back. Since my turn came up, my reaction to use shield, my shield's down, but I think I have my reaction back. You said you rolled a 17? Um, it, you yeah. shielded on I its rolled a 17, turn. yes. Comes, yeah. And then your reaction came back, yeah. Uh, I will use a flash of genius to add five to that roll to bring that up to a 22. Does that succeed? 22 does succeed. Uh, okay. Uh, Danny, what's the range on Flash of Genius? It's 30 feet. Okay, so I, I think you're okay. 25 feet me. away from her, according Thanks. to Rule 20. <laughs> Why do I have to die oh, for man. somebody else's character development? This is problematic writing, man. <laughs> hey, give her uh, back. Anyway, so, uh, so <laughs> Kiana, you take 39 uh -huh. points of necrotic damage halved down to 19. Oh, good. So I don't immediately go unconscious yet. You're welcome. Then, the symbiote uh -huh. shoots a bolt of lightning at each enemy within 60 feet ah, who isn't entangled. Damn it. I need all of you guys to make a dexterity saving throw oh, so that everyone but Kiana. Lightning. That's kind of cool. Uh, yep, I it drains the, the life out of you, and it turned it into energy, which it shoots as lightning. Virla, because you dodged, you do have advantage on this dex save. Ah. Oh, cool. I rolled a one. Can I use my uh, reaction uh, thing to oh, fucking... Christ. Come oh. on, dude, don't oh. make that face. I'll do later. I rolled eight. <laughs> I rolled one. I also I rolled, rolled a natural one. This is a great way to start the season, guys. None this of you so... guys succeeded. This is so painful. How many hit points does everyone 55. have? Fifty-seven. Hey, don't like ask that question. It's like we're it's like we're rolling. You <laughs> title card. <laughs> stop! Stop! Get shot. No, hold on. Everyone, but Kiana, how many it's... hit points does everyone have? I have fifty-seven. Okay, Voss. I rolled fifty-five. Yeah. Seventy-four. Christ. Are we all dead? Okay. 
you, you, you each take 60 points of lightning damage. Oh, I'm down. Are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> okay. Um, can I use my reaction gift of the gem dragon to see if I can, like, explode it from the inside a little bit? Just for shits and Uh, moves? what is... Uh, when it's is it when it deals damage to you or when it when hits it, with an attack roll? When it uh, let me actually good question. Uh, <clears throat> uh, boss, it was good count? knowing you. <laughs> when you boss, take you damage from elements? a creature, when you take a damage from a creature within ten feet of you, do not have absorb elements. Okay, so yeah, so, so it's gonna roll that hold strength hold save. Hold yep, DC save. It's possible. I did, that it'll roll I did take absorb elements. I am gonna okay. use that for my reaction. Do it, do okay, it. Yeah, Virla, you should probably use that. Uh, whew. yeah, no, I, I have I have nothing for this. I could add two d four to this, adding potentially eight to four total of fifteen, but I don't think that's gonna succeed. Uh, sorry, bud. Um, strength All save. Right. No, I'm down. Just check strength save. Oof. Um, six zero. I did all Let's of go. my hit points down and then three in one turn. <laughs> what attack? Thirteen damage. Uh, sorry, thirteen. Not thirteen damage. 13 on its strength, which fails, so give me the damage. Yeah, it fails. Uh, so it only takes six force damage, but it is pushed 10 feet away from me. I'm in the middle of it. What is that? You're ripping yeah. um, you rip That's apart. what I was hoping for, but I don't know <laughs> if the DM's gonna let that happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, can move through a space as narrow. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it can't move. What, what do you roll? 2d6? Uh, I rolled two d8 and I only got six damage, but two d8. It does go, still get roll pushed. Roll one more d8. It's it's not. Uh, roll one more d8 as you bludgeon one it from within. D8. There's nowhere for it to be be pushed. Roll one more Fine. d8 of damage. I don't know what you. I feel like this is a pretty good outcome compared to like moving it, it ten feet. For it no could have like exploded out from me and unrestrained <laughs> me. Uh, that's another four damage. Okay. Four. Well, I tried. Sorry, gang. Uh, that ends. Fortunately, that ends its turn. It brings us to Great. Kiana. Great. I Yay. like to imagine what just happened um, is Danny, because I did the Flash of Genius and then immediately got KO'd by one hit, was just like, Kiana, watch your six! Yeah, and then I turned around and there's just a bolt of lightning. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I was busy watching my six! Uh, but, but, okay, Luckily, cool. Well, that, that was its kind of big gun. <laughs> good. Okay. Um, Welcome to the hang. Yeah, all right. Uh, sure, cause I died. Bonus action. Uh, activate my arms and visage of the astral self. I'll spend two key points. Uh, I don't know what impact that will have on me being restrained. I'm not entirely sure how to get out of that. But it does do damage because it's definitely within 10 feet of me. Um, if we die in the mind, do we die in the real life of the game? Or I like... think this might be the real life <laughs> You're of the really... game. So good news. So you're you're uh, you're not in the mind. You're in you're in a real place. This is really happening. So oh, yes. okay. So, so we'll yes, die, we die for real. If we die. Yeah, that's if, what, if you die in the game, where, you die for real. That's so, what uh, Zara. Like his 3D rules. I got you. Main, main are, <clears throat> that's what Zara. Seventeen. Yeah. 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 Deck save, please. Unless you're threatening us right now. Um, <laughs> twelve. Okay. It takes eight force damage. Um. Uh. Yeah. Uh. So can I just attack it? What does Restrain do again? Uh, disadvantage on attack. Disadvantage. So the good uh, news is yeah. you can Reckless to make that straight, and because you're Restrained, it already has advantage. It already you. is gonna kick my ass. I'll just do, yeah, I'll just do Reckless. Uh, so I will Reckless attack with the, um, uh, I guess I can't, I can't bonus action flurry of blows. I'll just attack with the Silver Sword again, may as well. Um, so first attack, rolling straight. So that one, this die is going in timeout. <coughs> Second attack. They're definitely rolling with difficulty. And then it goes, thank you. Okay, well, it was a 21 to hit that time, so. Oh, uh, that's um, definitely going to hit. This is the shortest <laughs> season ever. I'm hoping if I just season. say it in the right tone the of voice, then we'll- The season starts and ends here. Uh, okay, and that is 15 damage. It's the finale, because none of us made okay, it past session good. one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're done. Yeah, as was... rail thin as Voss himself. <laughs> like, like I said, this is. Uh... Okay, that was my bonus action uh, to summon the arms. My action to attack. Uh, does raging add a bonus to that? I forget. Does raging add Wait, a bonus? Wait, does raging to add a bonus uh, to? Yes, I believe it adds a plus two to your damage. 
Oh, then mm-hmm. that should be... Yeah, remember be... remember how that would have killed the uh, the Arburet yeah, last thanks, season? Thanks, yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks. Yeah, right. uh, I do think that actually means that I dealt total six more points of damage than I thought I had because of the two attacks it hit last turn. Um, okay, I'll take the additional off. There we go. Yeah, I didn't think it would make or break this thing being uh, alive. I don't think that actually did it. Hold on, minus. Um, there we go. I don't suppose that go. unrestrained me. Uh, long shot. Uh... No. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, <laughs> for a moment there. You can use an action to make a strength check to free yourself. That is oh, the mechanic. I could be for doing it. that at advantage because of raging. I'll do that next turn if I survive. Uh, if you survive, cool. Uh, does that end your turn, Kiana? Yep, that was action, bonus action, and uh, my reaction resets, but I'll do that later. Yes. All right, Voss. Here it's we up to go. You. Uh, okay, I gotta roll a straight twenty on this. Wait, right? are you still up? Mm-hmm. No, I'm down. Oh, Death never mind. Throw. Oh, God. Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. It's a uh, nine. Fuck, no. dude. Nice. No. One uh, failure. This is going exactly like I expected to happen when you're like emotional support armor See, <laughs> turned evil. I thought the uh, the mind flayers, uh, technically the mind flayers will win. Um, we're just, we, we just won't get to that point. Danny. Nat one last time, so I'm switching to one of my other eight sets of dice I play for Danny. Don't, don't, don't. If Natural ever you 20. Need a 20. <laughs> oh, really? No way. <laughs> Amazing. Captain! Captain! So you're up Captain. with like one hit point or Captain. something? Yes, yeah. At yeah. the you start your of your turn. turn, Danny, you go down like you. Flash of inspiration, prevent Kiana from being killed outright. Thank you. You. Struck by lightning, down. Your turn comes back up. What happens to the Captain of the Paraspora that brings her from death's door back into the fight? I've been playing a lot of Luigi's Mansion 3 recently, and when you die in that game, the little ghost dog comes and, like, licks you a little bit, and then you wake up. So I'm imagining that in, uh-huh. like, her dream world, uh, Plug comes and, like, bites Danny's hand or something. And she's like, ah, shit! You are not, you are not out of this fight yet. <laughs> That's not what the dog sounds like. It goes like, woof, woof, Come, man. Captain, my captain. <laughs> it ain't over, kids. All right. What would you like to do with your turn, Danny? You have action bonus, action movement. I didn't, you are prone currently. I did not think I would have that. I'll stand up uh, first. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, classic. God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, and then I will use my action to summon the Force Ballista in handheld mode. Uh, and then use my bonus action to fire on the fungal symbiote with the force ballista, Yay. which is not a spell save; it just happens to hit. <laughs> it's just an attack roll, so go ahead and roll. Today is in the studio. It's a dirty twenty That'll to hit right? you. Yeah. That'll hit. Okay. All right, that's one no, that's the projector. Three d eight force damage, and it gets pushed. Uh, I think ten feet back, right? I haven't had to use this in so long. Five feet away from the cannon, so I guess more towards the wall. Oh, Kiana, do me a quick favor, actually. Go what? ahead and me? read your... Uh, I believe that they take half damage on attack. They're resistant to damage from attack rolls, not damage dealt by the creature, right? When you hit them when you're raging. No, your spirit guardians do. Ah. Oh, right, my spirit guardians. <laughs> <laughs> they give disadvantage, but they also give resistance, and I think yes. it's just against attack uh, rolls. While raging, um, the first... Oh my gosh, wait. Uh, when the yeah. target hits a creature other than you... Damage oh, dealt by the attack. It wasn't an attack roll. So, okay, so, so we're all kosher. Everything that happened, happened as it was supposed to. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because it, it says when the target hits said, a creature as, other than you, it doesn't say with an attack, but yeah. As long as you continue to hit it, it's going to have disadvantage, and it's going to uh, have... Everyone's going to have resistance to the damage from its attacks. I'm helping. As long nice. as you <laughs> keep hitting it. Uh, that's oh. 15 points of force damage, and it gets pushed five feet back. All right. Taking the gamble that force damage is not halved for it because I don't think that that's going to account for the magical what's its and who's its. Very few things are resistant uh, to force damage. Force damage? damage? For, it is not resistant to force damage. Oof. It's a mute. No. Uh, you want thingamabobs? I got 20. <laughs> yeah, hold on. No, it's it, it's accurately for a fungus immune to poison. Um, um, all right. Danny will like turn to Voss concerned because, like, oh my god, my buddy is down. I can do nothing about this. Voss is just on the ground, dead, cold, looking like. Ah. <laughs> no! At least we're all having fun with this episode, right? Like, we're dying, but we're having a good attitude about it. Oh, I'm Crap. having fun. I feel like my bad guy's never always getting trounced. This is great. All right, Virla. 
Put me in my place. Let's put this thing down. <laughs> I mean... How rough is it looking? I mean, aside from its face. <laughs> there's so much stuff that, that Virla might do, but it doesn't help that the plant uh, is going done, next. You've done more than a third. To all okay. of us together? The power of friendship? No, you all right, can. I, yes, I want you together. Okay. I, 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 have, a, I have a thing. Um... He said he had a thing, and then he went silent, audience. <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking yeah, but we're gonna cut it made me post, into a person so where I gotta about. fucking read the lines of every spell and make sure that everything's... So the idea that I had in mind, Virla is 14 mm -hmm. hit points away from being down. And mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he's, he's trying to not do that. My first idea was vampiric touch um, at the fourth level so that I can swap out the damage of necrotic to lightning and then uh, channel divinity, max lightning... <laughs> But the mm -hmm. question is, does that still regain me half my hit points? Uh, yeah, why wouldn't it? Because the the wording of the spell is, uh, on a hit, the target takes 3d6 necrotic damage, and you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. Um, I'm, I think that while technically rules is written, that maybe it wouldn't work. I think rules is intended, uh... We're replacing all of that necrotic with lightning in this spell. You're so. a robot, so, so, so in a way, do it, you're do like it. overcharging okay. yourself all of that. by taking all the lightning energy Very in. cool. <laughs> Very legal. All right. Cool. So, uh, is this a saving throw or an attack? This is an attack roll. It has to it's hit, It's an right? attack roll on my part. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's an attack roll on my part. Vera, but come on, Virla. Come on, Virla. <laughs> You've got something. Noir's uh... like, don't worry, I just have to roll a dice. I have to roll a dice. <laughs> come on, buddy. <laughs> Natural 20 fucking ah, yes. Yes. Fuck it That up. is a spell oh, damage holy crit sh Wait oh my god And you can max it yeah. Yes yes I'm Are you doubling it Doubling it This Fuck is going to be bananas <laughs> What damage is it man Roll so uh, Lightning uh, how, no, much? How, how much damage? Oh, the max? I don't Do know the math. Come So you're, you're, so you're oh maxing max it And then it doubles And then so, yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah. Many okay, dice? so uh, so so it's it's forty six. Okay. Uh, I don't get a bonus for that, uh, but because I'm switching it up for lightning, I'm using my channel divinity. That's just twenty four. Doubled is forty eight. Yes. Fuck doubled yeah. is forty eight. And then yeah. you get half heal, of that back as and I heal twenty four. Yeah. Whew. And Holy I can keep doing shit. it as long as I have it up because it's constant. You can do what? <laughs> okay. I can't do the channel divinity thing because I only uh, have okay. one per short rest, but. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay, that was extremely devastating. Um, how, what happens here? Describe this. This this is yeah. maybe the move of the fight, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so Virla goes like and runs up to to one of the um, uh, to one of like the tendrils that's kind of planting it in the ground. Uh, it, the spell says vampiric touch, but really what it is is like a fucking i've been watching a lot of naruto lately it's a chidori blade <laughs> it's the it's a light, it, his fist yes. is covered in lightning and he's uh -huh, and he's uh -huh. and he's fucking flocking a punch at the thing and that heals Hell. me <laughs> yeah you watch as lightning uh he puts a mechanical fist in lightning shoots all through this thing and then like all of his like scarf and everything like starts to float up as the lightning out of this thing flows back into him you basically turn the trick it just did which is necrotic damage to Kiana turn yeah. into lightning energy against all of you, you reverse that. You uno reverse it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I heal too. Uh, and I have a bonus action. So I'm going to use and that. Bonus <laughs> I'm going to spiritual weapon. Hell um, yeah. Go ahead, spiritual weapon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Come on, Birla. Uh, yeah, 2d8 plus 2. If I hit it... I don't think that does it. That's a 13. 13 will not hit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I tried. Somewhere between 13 and 17. Um, yeah. It's 16. That's my turn. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, that's your turn. A pretty epic turn. What dude. a That was Ooh. awesome. Uh, we'll see. But now it's my turn. Oh, that's two nat. That's two big nat. <laughs> that is insane. Okay. Stop that. Uh, cool. So it used its big thing. So now she's going to beat the shit out of you guys. Um, the only question oh, is who's beating the thing. shit out of... Uh, you are already throttled by it, Kiana. Thanks. Um, I hadn't noticed. There's no bad option here, right? Because, I mean, all of us are basically, except for maybe Virla, about yeah, two that's seconds the thing, away is from it's, dying. 
Yeah, it's like, uh, it, it could try to hit any of you. Um, well, it's definitely gonna try to hit. It's, first, it's gonna make a, uh, Vine Rip attack against, um, Virla. Now, the good news is that it's at disadvantage. It's at disadvantage, baby. what I do? It's being harried by ghosts, it's not, not what you. you did, it's what... Yeah. Kiana did, yeah. I keep summoning uh, a well, ghost well, what I do every to, time. to invoke its... I, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Imitation is uh, flat, dirty. Right? Twenty, you jackass. <laughs> uh, yeah, shield, jackass. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Wait, dirty go. twenty cool. was it's a disadvantage. Cool, it's gonna hit you again. That was dirty twenty at disadvantage. Yeah. All right, we'll roll again with disadvantage. Oh Nox. wait, no, no, no. I I absorbed elements. I believe, and that's still within the same. No, turn. your turn just came up, and then you yeah, got your so reaction you reset. Back. Yeah, oh, okay. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, you can't yeah. Again. <laughs> okay, this one. This was actually a bad roll. This is just a sixteen to hit. Okay, that misses. And because shield is still up. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're the big... well, and also my my AC is eighteen. Right. You're the big problem, but it's gonna try and take Kiana. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna try and hit Kiana too, because it really doesn't what? like her. What? I'm still inside, inside its body. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna try to hurt you, but first it's gonna it's gonna try its third attack against against Virla. Here we go. Okay. Um, that is a twenty-one at disadvantage. That still does not hit. My AC with shield is twenty. Three. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you have an 18 AC? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. chain mail or something well, like we, that. We, oh, we got yeah, the mail on the side quest. No, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, I switched out the elven chain with like with just plus one chain mail armor. You can have um, that? Real is a cleric. Yeah, I mean, I, cleric. I spent a, a shit ton of gold to get it at the beginning of... Yeah, he did a whole special stuff. quest to get a super rare item that he could use yeah. as a wizard, and then he became a cleric and just bought oh, normal ass armor. <laughs> wow. uh, been there, my friend. Been yeah. there. Do you just yeah. have the... Hmm, I the think that my sorcerer would multi-class into a, a class yeah. with uh, armor proficiency. I don't want it. I think that makes sense for the character. I've, I've been wearing, that. like, studded leather since season one. That's Do you want dude. it? You can have it. Dude. Barbarians we'll can't wear that. armor, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, barbarians don't benefit from certain things if they wear more than medium armor, and you don't benefit from any of your monk shit if you're wearing any armor. So gross. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't want this. Actually, oh yeah, I have unarmed it, here's defense the, twice here's the deal, over. Kiana. Because it's elven, it actually I think it would bypass all those things, but your AC would still go down. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, yeah, like your 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 monk AC is really good because you have a great yeah, wisdom. Yeah, it's Dex plus Con plus ten. Uh, except I think when I'm a monk, it's like whiz plus... Uh, whatever, it's good. It's 18. Cool, it's going to anyway. throttle you, Kiana. Thanks. Uh, this is just a straight roll because... Uh, no, you're restrained. It's advantage. Uh, that's a 30 to hit. Yeah, you, you got me. Just a little. 15, 21 piercing down to 10 piercing. I'm still up. Whew. It's close, but I'm still up. Amazing, honestly. Okay, so TBH. don't do that again. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to do that again anyway. No. Um, no. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, that? real quick. Bonus action. It's going to move you back into the center. Nah. And uh, <laughs> just trying to force your way Man. out and just keep pulling you back in. Oh. Every time um, I think I'm out, they pull me back in. <laughs> Kiana, it's your turn. Great. All right. I'm out of other things to do. Let's just start punching. First attack. I'm going to do it recklessly so that I just roll it flat. Um, Silver Sword. Uh, that's a 23 to hit. Nice. Um, Hell yeah. yeah. So, 2d6 plus 7. You hit it, that means that the Spirit Guardians stay up. By the way, uh, as as much work as Virla, uh, Virla's shield was doing on that last round of, of mm. that, that mm -hmm. hairy of attack, uh, that was, am I saying that right? Harry as you were being attacked a bunch. Yep. Um, the Spirit Guardians were coming in and like, one that should have clearly been a blow, like deflect, push away, as your shield catches the rest of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You see, like, astral, you know, forms coming in and uh, catching tendrils mm. that would normally have struck true. Yeah, the, the guardians stay up, even if I don't attack, as long as I take damage in the round. So uh, thanks for continuing to crush your me. Your rage stays up, but your the thing where... Um, the, thing, the first they, creature I hit with an attack protect, on my turn. Yeah, yeah, they will only protect other people against a creature you attack. All right, well, so first attack rage did... stays up if you take damage. First attack did 12 damage. Uh, second okay. attack. Uh, that is only a 16 to hit, but if it misses, I'll use a key point to push it up. 16 just hits. Haha, <laughs> hey, we Austin. found his AC. Hey, Austin. I forgot the mm -hmm. damage from Absorb Elements uh, in, in my punch. Ooh. I don't okay, believe I get it. Okay, hold on. Kiana, finish your turn, and then we're, yeah, we'll... Yeah. we'll... 
Might take a little we'll while. Uh, so that is 13 That's more okay. slashing damage. Uh, Jeez. Bonus action flurry. Here, of you blows. guys were worried. Two people go down from one hit. No big. I have too Who many things I need to spend bonus actions to activate. The power of friendship. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he would have had to fight this thing alone. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Maybe it would have been weaker though. That's you know what? That's a behind the scenes. Come ask us at a Q and A. What, Ooh, what, uh, what the, the the path of inner strength would have gotten him. All right. Uh, so now I can make two unarmed strikes. Uh, first attack. Ooh, that is only a twelve. However, I am going to spend how many key points? Uh. <clears throat> I need to get it up to a 16. So that'd be two key points because it's it increases by two for each key point. Yes, I just had to make sure I had the conversion rate correct. All right, so that will make it hit. Uh, it's much less damage than the greater silver sword, but still. Uh, so that, it, yeah, that's only 1d6 plus five force damage. Uh, yeah, so that's eight force damage on the third attack. Final attack. Do I, yeah, fine, whatever. I'm probably going down next turn. I'm going to spend, I roll, so what I rolled was an 11. I'm going to spend three of my remaining four key points uh, to push it up to hit. Um, okay. And do nine more points of force damage. That's, hey, that's a lot of damage you just did on this turn. Yep. So even from within, you see just like, um, I'm thinking like when Frodo is escaping Shelob and he's in uh -huh. like the spider webs, he's like stuck, but like slashing his way through. You guys see, can see Kiana in the middle of this horrible rotten thing, just like great sword slashing through as more like come and like keep grabbing her arms. I do also in. glow in the dark, so it's probably easier to see if anything. Um, nice. I probably could have done another telekinetic reprisal when it throttled me, but I forgot. That's fine. But yeah, that was my, yeah, my action, my point, bonus action, yeah. and all of my key points, basically. So <laughs> good luck, gang. My eight hit points are not going to survive the round. She says Hell yes. Too okay, one uh, really quick. I believe it's an extra 2d6. It mm -hmm. is of the triggering type, which was lightning. lightning and then damage. I channel divinity in that turn, which I think so then that's... just maximizes the damage. Oh my god, and it was a crit. <laughs> yeah, so and, that's... Yeah. No, uh, well, no, no the, I, the... I absorbed elements uh, 1d6 uh, at uh, first level, so it's only 1d6. Oh, okay, Credited so it was 12, 12, and you get an extra 6 hit points back. Tasty. Cool. <laughs> wow. Vir when we look back on this combat, Danny rolling a nat 20 and Virla yeah, also rolling a crit same are going to be the things that turned this from a, a bloodbath into a victory. <laughs> yeah. Don't mind me. Maybe. Kiana could still die. <laughs> Down in the Don't trenches. Speaking of Voss, why don't you go ahead and roll that tasty death save for me? Okay. Stop, 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 stop. stop. I have Let's see if we can... I don't have hey, who has a revivify? Let's see if we can flip oh, him over. Fuck. Let's see if we can flip him over. I have revivify. Uh, I just need a one. Two. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but he's not dead. Yeah, no, that's he's the second dying. failure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Still dying. He, he kind of, <clears throat> all of a sudden, you guys see him moving a little bit, and he just flops over to the other side. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, you don't so have to make close. us laugh in this moment, man. You can you can <laughs> say you need help. Uh, I can't. I'm down. Danny. <laughs> uh, Danny will run over to Voss. I have ten. And open up the bag of holding and start going through it, just, like, looking for a healing potion. Because I got to be like, okay, right, we're dead knoll, water from salt, uh, dragon goop, squid ash, mind flare bomb goop, bean. Uh, <laughs> feed him. So, Sophia, feed him. You can do the feed funniest thing right now. You, you can do the funniest thing right now. Feed feed him. Him. The bean. Hey, let's swap out his corruption for another fucked up thing. I was huh? gonna say, like, maybe he'd get cool armor out of it. I don't think that's how that bean works. Uh, but Danny, I am the bean man now. <laughs> but Danny does not have uh, any healing potions or any healing spells other than you've died. Here's Rubify. Uh, so she'll look to the cleric and kind of try and make eye contact with Vera like, if I send him to you, do you got him? Uh, you don't have to send him. I got him next turn. Okay. Actually, do I got do him next got turn? Am I in range? <laughs> I got him. I got him. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Why am I the one carrying two healing potions? Because <laughs> you're the only one without any magical healing. You're in the so trenches. Long. It's for me. You're the one in the yeah. trenches. <laughs> I wonder if I can like uncork one while I'm grappled by this horrible uh, mushroom in that thing. Case, yeah, it's a bonus action to drink one. Oh, cool. Uh, I just have to sacrifice the ability to punch it more. Danny will yeah. continue walking over a little bit. Get a little closer to it, which is, yeah. Uh, I'm going to bonus action, fire on it with the force ballista. Man, imagine if I absorbed elements at like the fifth or sixth level. 
Sometimes you have to. Like it's the road it, not taken. Yeah. Two roads diverged in a fungus cave. Uh, and that's the great thing about uh, multi-classes. You have those empty higher level spell slots that you just <laughs> yeah. use to juice up some really dumb spells. It's fun. Guys, that's a Sorry, 19 to hit. Yes. Hell yeah. Yeah. All right, and that's going to be okay. 3d8 plus. Oh, I forgot to add the plus five last time I rolled this. <laughs> this thing keeps taking retroactive damage. <laughs> it's the best kind of damage. At a certain point, I got to be like, if you didn't remember, it doesn't happen. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're also high level and cool. Hey, we're just getting back. I know to that's why I don't. That's be... why I'm not bothered. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's 14 points of force damage, and then I will fire he moves. on it with a scorching ray. Yay! Cool. He moves back five feet from the force. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Fearless. Like I tried to now. angle it so that it could go towards that wall and not towards Virla. Yeah, but you it's didn't. It's fine. <laughs> we're, we're making it work. It's oh, very hey, clearly <laughs> diagonal from you. <laughs> How you holding up? in front of me. Oh, you know. Uh, the first one is a natural 20. <gasps> the All right. Is is a, please just kill it. I would love to not die in this thing. <laughs> the second is a 14, so I don't think that hits. And then the th third is another natural 20. Yeah! Holy yeah. shit. Captain. Oh, Captain. Captain. That's your third nat 20 in the, in the battle. That's the fourth two in one spell. spell. If you it's count, two in one spell. Two in I'm one going to spell. Yeah. die in gold. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tack my Dark Fester D8 blue? onto the first one, so that gets the crit, and then the last one will just be yep. the normal 2d6. So the first one is um, 2d6 plus 1d8. Doubled. Doubled. Uh, that didn't roll great. Um, that's five plus... 12 plus 8. So 25 on the first one. Doubled to 50? Okay. No, I think she... I doubled it. We'll do the max damage. I was oh. I was talking about... It was doubled for Virla because Virla took max damage, so then we were doubling right. it. It's roll and take the max. Yeah. So. And then the so 25 damage. second one misses because it was a 14. And then yep. the third one, I rolled 9 plus 12, so 21 points of fire damage. Jesus... This thing is starting to look rough. Starting! <laughs> starting to. It's really rough. It's It was rough a, a turn ago. Um, okay. Huge chunks beginning to smolder away at it now. Uh, it's beginning to, like, shriek a little bit. We're going weed whacking, baby. <laughs> and that's my turn. All right. All right, Virla. All right. Uh, I what am within 60 feet. Thank goodness. So, uh, bonus action healing word. Um... 5d4 plus 2. It's not a lot, but it's it, it at least He's will, alive. Will kill you. So Voss is no longer dead. Yes. How much that meant? Uh, much? 5d4. Uh, so you heal. Okay. Mm -hmm. 7, 12, 14. Oh. Nice. Welcome nice. back to the world of the living. And because that's my bonus action, I can't use my bonus action to attack with spiritual weapon, so I'm going to use my action Correct. to dodge again. Well, I guess if we die here, uh, we is, just come wait, back. Is Vampiric Touch concentration? It is. So you're you not casting attack. it again. You can oh, attack. that's right. Yeah, what am I talking about? Yeah. Punch. Yeah. I do, I do that. Just straight. Uh, Hell yeah, Virla. Yep. Hell yeah, Virla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should just do this all the time. I can... I, can... <laughs> I found the new meta. <laughs> Oh, natural 19, 28. Damn. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Let's go. Uh, 3d6, and I heal half of this. Um, it's still lightning, but j just for the flavoring, but uh, it deals 7, and I heal 3. Okay. It's, it's a lot less good than, uh, what was oh, it, like shit. 30 Sorry. before? Uh, Wait. Vampiric, Vampiric Touch was 4th level because I needed the Storm Sphere, uh, lightning damage for it. So I, I roll one more. So seven, eight. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so eight damage. And I heal four. Okay. We climbing up there. <laughs> All right, Vila, that ends your turn? Yes, it does. <sighs> oh, wait. Fungus brings us to the symbiote. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. At the end of your turn, before its turn starts, it's going to use its reaction. When an enemy ends their turn in the Thornblood space, uh, sorry, yeah. 
uh, now you can go look up the real monster's name. When the <laughs> uh, when you end its turn with it, uh, your turn within the Behemoth space, uh, I c it can attempt to pull you down. Please make a dexterity saving throw. So that's that's me. I believe in you. Yep. You're a nimble little guy. Girla. You're only a giant metal man covered in heavy metal armor. <laughs> you can be nimble and quick. Mm, one. No. <laughs> Uh, Virla falls prone. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. This, 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 oh uh, if he gets knocked prone, well, I get fucking tangled up. Okay, it's fine. I'm not mad. Oh, no, my weakness, getting knocked prone. <laughs> what do I do? Ah, this briar patch is just the worst. <laughs> uh, cool. So the first thing it's going to do is is put the fucking kai... It's got, a, it's got a high enough wisdom. It understands that Kian is protecting them all. So the first thing it's going to do is put the kibosh on that. No! Absolutely so not. you're restrained. Yep. Uh, so that's a 27 to hit. I think you got me on that one. Uh, uh, that's not great. Hold on. Six, I will silver bar. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> he okay. beats my AC by nine. Okay, here we go. So silvery barbs is just one more dice, right? Uh, yeah. Then you take the lowest. Okay. That is uh, a 21. Yeah, that'll hit. Ah. Fine. Okay. So six, um, good try. 12. Closer. Uh, I'm gonna give myself advantage on the next. Um, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I can't go down. Okay. I, need, I, need, I, need, I need my turn back up. It's your internal battle. You gotta. Oh, you gotta punch the guy. I, I got. Wait. Do I get advantage on? Did I get advantage on the deck saving throw because I was dodging? You Ooh. didn't dodge. You vampiric touched. Yeah. I didn't dodge. I vampiric. Right. Touched. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Uh, We're good. Kiana, 18 points of piercing damage down to nine. I have eight hit points left. Oh, okay. Down she goes. Kiana goes unconscious. <laughs> All of the rage uh, phantoms drop. Oh, no. Uh, it's going to roll throttle at advantage against Virla. Uh-oh. Because Come you're prone. On, and within its space. Come on, Virla. Uh, 26. Yeah, that hits. Mm. Oh, that was really low, though. He might be saved by the dice. Uh... No, you're not. Uh, 18 points of piercing damage. Okay. And then I need to roll for concentration for vampiric touch. You are restrained. Oh, okay. Welcome to the party. Uh, 19 for the constitution. Okay, yeah, you more than make it. All right. Um, uh, what is this range? Oh, do, do, do. 30 feet to hit boss. It does have movement, so what? it can always move with. Boss just got yes, back up. Yes, yes, <laughs> Oh no! Don't. Oh fuck me! <laughs> Hold on, I actually have to measure, make sure I do this right. Five, ten, fifteen. Hey, 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 hey! Five, thirty. You sneaky son of a bitch, Voss. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Um, it is going to roll throttle against Danny. Hi. That is a twenty-seven to hit. That will hit. It literally doesn't matter. I have flashing. one hit point. <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, I roll a bunch of damage. Uh, you're restrained and you're knocked unconscious. Great. That's the number two down. Come on, man. This Here is your personal go. journey. The... <laughs> this is your art. So. <laughs> it's going to hit. I have an AC. 11. I'm going to roll in front of the group. Mm -hmm. Because it gets one vine rip attack now this deals more damage but it doesn't restrain you okay how much how many hit points do you have i have 14 pretty sure it's gonna be natural one to not hit you bud yeah it, it's gonna hit. it's possible one in 20. <laughs> yeah, mm. down i go i have to rub it in with an 18 holy so, shit rude danny and kiana are down virla and voss are up yes well v voss is currently well, well. Virla's up, though. Maybe this was Virla's personal journey all along. <laughs> Virla season two. <laughs> Virla's a team player, you guys. <laughs> Start firing off those healing words, bud. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Sorry, lightning spear. Yep. Guess you'll have to wait. <laughs> oh, actually. Uh, all right, how much am damage? Am I within, like, What's touch the damage, distance? Boss? Of who? Uh, Kiana and Danny. Since they're also I think restrained. we're on opposite sides. Uh, you of the are nightmare. not. Yeah, and you're all restrained. Maybe it'll blurb you closer. All right. I mean, that's fine. I'll still. Uh, uh, well, does he know I'm dead? 
does, does he know like he can hit me? Because uh, for all he knows, like I'm still on the ground. Yeah, you did just get healing worded. You didn't get time <laughs> to get up from prone. This thing can see. Okay. From where? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> Blind sight. Oh. I was in case you healing were curious. Wording the fungus behind Voss. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. Uh, yeah, Voss, you take more than 14 points of damage. <sighs> no. All right. Do you have anything you can... Uh, you got anything in you? Um, no. No, I do not. I used my reaction already. I don't have any way to goose up my AC. Um, no way to reduce damage right now. Um, okay. down I go. Kiana, can I please get a death save? Oh, right, yes. The fun part. 14, I succeed. Whew. Okay. Voss. Okay. Oh, God. Please roll with advantage because you used silvery barbs. <laughs> fuck, good call, dude. <laughs> oh, fucking yes. Come on. Come on. The 13. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then that mm-hmm. 20. Yeah! Let's fucking go! Silvery Let's barbs. Let's go! All right. Man, I'm the only one who hasn't critted in this fight. I'm sorry, it's guys. I'm just really dragging this whole team down. It's okay. We are the Boss. Paraspora, blessed by Mistra to roll fucking crits all the time. And also Kiana was there. <laughs> and Kiana's there. Thanks, gang. Boss, I'm going to write down how many hit points this thing has left. <gasps> Come on, man. It's poetic. I don't it's know if arc. I can do a lot of damage. I'll tell you that much. Are you close enough to grab one of my swords? <laughs> what I can do is I can get you everybody are? back up. You you are. You're, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, though. if you want to do that, that would be oh. pretty epic. I think that, it was, that so, would be so, a test of of allegiance to the group rather than a test of inner yeah. strength, if ever I've seen one. Hell yeah. Yeah, I I, I will do that. I will. Uh, okay. He will sort of after taking the hit, and getting right back up. He's like, no, not again. He sticks his sword in the ground. He uses that to prop himself up. Um, yes. This he starts glowing. Uh, gold um, as sort of Whoa. from beneath the fungus um, the the magic of Yisgard seeps up we're in Yisgard oh yeah we don't just die heroically yeah. what were we worrying about I'm sorry please continue uh, Your big we, moment. we have to wake up the next day is the thing like, we'd be, I did know that was like that was a possibility yes. we'd be here for a while um, but uh, it, and he's going to cast um, aid at the 6th level Oof. Oh. Whoa. Oh, uh, shit. I'm going to quicken spell that. Sorry. I'll use two sorcerer points. To... Ooh, okay. Sorcerer. Uh, Hell yeah. So that's a flat 25 to um, three people. Uh, wow. Yep. So that is uh, that's Kiana. Like a third of Dan. That's a, almost over Thank half you? of Danny's. Kiana, magic. Danny, uh, Birla get uh, 25 um, hit points. Nice. Nice. Aww. And your max goes up, and by, your 25. Max goes up by 25. Oh, dang. That'll be right. potentially useful later. Um, Aid is extremely quiet. And then he says, uh, all right, like I said, I'm doing this with my friends. Um, hmm. Takes the sword out of the ground. All right, you got an action now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, two yeah. attacks. First one. My boss. That's 13. It's not going to hit. Hold that crit, critical. Crit, crit. Oh. Uh, second one. I believe in you. Crit, 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 crit. crit Are we flanking crit, crit, because it's got Virla uh, on there? Danny, okay, wait. There oh, is wait, no flanking, flank. it's immune. Yeah, but Danny is back in conscious if uh, if she wants flash. to flash her genius, oh, yeah. or miss. Yeah, you can take, add, add five to that. two 13s that. Yeah, I, 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 I rolled two 13s. It's okay. I I, I'll, mm-hmm. I can make both of them hit. Um, Ooh. No, I can make oh, one okay. of them hit. Okay. You can make the other one hit. Hell yeah. Ah. Okay. Team okay, work. so Team Danny, work. Flash of Genius, what do you say inside to help him hit once? <laughs> uh, Danny will duck what deeper the into the vines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but also she'll be like, Sword comes in just... Whoosh. All right, yeah. And when you said you needed your help dealing with the l- lichen that was on you, I didn't think you would mean it this quickly, but okay, let's do this. <laughs> oh, I didn't think it'd come off of me, uh, but here we are. And that's uh and i will use a um flourish on this uh we'll use a we'll, we'll use a slashing flourish we'll use we'll use a, an offensive one and then can i use two flourishes in one turn as much damage as you can pump in 
That I think good. I think so. As long as it doesn't say like you need to use a bonus action. Weapon or anything. hits. You can spend one use of bardic inspiration. Check. Make sure it doesn't say once per turn. Uh, it, it doesn't say once per turn. Oh no 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 yeah, yeah, no! You can good. only use one blade first option per turn. Yeah, no, actually not correct. Uh, in that gotcha. case, then I'll okay. do the defensive one <laughs> um, to pump my AC up. Smart. Well, I will. I will say. This thing is really close to dead. If you want to be the one to take it out, you gotta okay, fine. It's up to you. Right. Come on, okay. Here we go. Solid. All right, here yeah. we go. Um, do you have extra damage? We're all rooting for you. Okay. Uh, Bardic Inspiration is a D8, I believe. Correct. All right. Um, so here's the slashing damage first for the first one. Um, that is 10 total uh, plus the D8 from uh, Bardic Inspiration. That is a total. Okay, 16 total for the first hit. Not bad. Nice. And then um, second hit, I will use Favor by the Gods uh, to goose that up. Mm -hmm. So that's 2d4. Nice. Plus 5, uh, 18. To hit? To, yes, to okay. hit, 18 hits, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, second hit, total of 14. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's a 14 yeah, damage. Finish it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Mama. You just did it, man. Um, yeah. So he second hit comes through. What was it? 16, 14, 30, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 30 damage. Yeah, 30, 30. Yeah. 30 hit points left. Woo! Let's go. <sighs> and uh, the second the thing goes limp, Voss also goes limp. He's... All right. Well, he's easy peasy. Voss. <sighs> Well, hold on. Foss, oh. as you strike into it with your sword, it slashes through. You feel the tendrils of the mycelium grab the blade and begin to like tug it from you, digging into the myriad pieces of this, this broken blade you, you hold. It jerks the blade from your hand. It is going to use armor retreat. Once per day, when it is reduced to zero hit points, is instead reduced to one hit point and retreats back into the armor it came from. It becomes immune to all damage until the end of its next turn. So it grabs your sword and it shrinks down to the size of the armor, but it is still alive with one hit point and immune to all damage until the end of its upcoming turn. But Fuck we're you. all ungrappled, right? Or restrained or whatever? Yep, you guys are all unrestrained. You're all conscious. Woo! Huh. It falls to the ground there. Danny, your go. I would like to hold my action until it's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Just all prepping to strike. Virla. I would also like to hold my action until it's turn. <laughs> all right. Danny and Virla. Danny's like got the Spitfire out. Virla with his big like lightning stick, like smacking it against his hand. Honestly, the spear is kind of off in the corner. Looming. He is literally just like fist up, ready to. You guys all like walk up to it <laughs> carefully, and this Everyone little carapace snapping. piece of armor lashes out in one last, one last fast strike. Four whipping tendrils. Uh, it's going to attack. Straight because no one is restrained. Ah. It's gonna attack everyone once. It's gonna attack Virla. That is a thirty to hit. God. Yeah. Uh, that's nineteen. Pl uh, uh, bludgeoning plus sixteen slashing. No. Is that so? Is that two different con saving throws or? Nope. It's all just one. Oh fuck. Okay. So what's that? Thirty five. Have... And I have to beat a uh, 17. To keep Vampiric Touch up? Yeah. Yes, correct. You're okay. still conscious? I am, yes. Okay. All right, Kiana. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a natural 19. Okay, sure. I guess you can hit me. If anyone has any reactions they want to use, by the way, I think everyone's reactions came back up. Um, no, because Virla and Danny are holding their action. Voss, you still do have an action. I still have a reaction, but you need to damage me first. The end of its turn, it's no longer immune to damage. Mm. At the end of its turn. Gotcha. So my reaction mm -hmm. damaging it now won't do anything. Mm. Correct. I have one silver barb. Uh, That's 20 it. 20 bludgeoning and uh, 11. So 31 points of damage to you. I'm unconscious Red. again. Yay. Danny. Yeah, uh -huh. is here to have a little nap. I'm in danger. 
27 to hit? Yeah, that'll hit. Oh, Christ, dude. Yes, total. No, I rolled a natural 27. <laughs> I can only... 17 plus 6. Uh, I can either 20, use the silvery barbs for Danny or for plus. myself. Hold it for yourself. You can stomp on it next it's, round. Yeah. We'll be fine. Do, do, okay. it, do it for yourself. It's more poetic if you get... 36 to points of damage though. against Danny. Danny's down. And Voss, one final attack. Come on, Voss. Be poetic. Save Hello, yourself. Hello, friend. That's a... 22 to hit. Uh, well, we'll do it. Uh, silvery barbs. Whew. Okay. Here we go. I think you need a natural one. Yeah. It's got a plus 12 to hit. What's your AC? 11. <laughs> it's got a plus 12 to hit. It needs a natural one. Still possible. That's a natural 17. No. Ah. How many hit points do you have, Voss? I have just the one. No. Oh. All right, Virla, it's up to you again. It <laughs> swings down okay. with the sword, Voss. After all of this, you slicing through all of the damage done to it. It pulls the sword that you were holding, slams down on you. The sword <laughs> sunders. You go down hard into the ground. Virla, you have a held action. So my held action was to attack with Vampiric Touch, but Vampiric Touch dropped because I, I didn't roll high enough. I think you could still punch so it. I could still punch it. You want to punch it? It's got one hit point, yeah. man. You right. just gotta hit it. Please, for yeah, the just love of God, right. just squish you it. Just gotta just, hit just it. Just an unarmored man. strike. You just gotta Since, hit it. Ooh, I didn't. I didn't say who mm. I, I gave advantage to. If Virla's the only one up, can I have given it? Yeah, to give it to Virla. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Virla, you need to deal one point of damage. Can if, you do it? You need it. to hit a sixteen you guys, with we your all strength stop and talking proficiency. About how little he needs to do until after he's rolled. <laughs> Remember your training. Thumb on the outside. If, if it's I have an a plus unarmed five, strike, I have a plus five. Yeah, uh, you just need to, to hit my roll. But I'm also rolling. <laughs> to, to hit. You need to advantage. hit an eleven. At advantage. Mm-hmm. First roll was an eleven. Uh, second roll was a sixteen. <sighs> so. So we're good. That? 21. Virla, finish it. Can I just for flavor pick up one of the swords, or like one of the blades that was broken off from Voss's and, and use that? Just be like. Absolutely. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Time for a killer, Virla, one liner. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> <laughs> Raise their standards. Nor needs to. Did you take to the back tracker on power? Uh, <laughs> home game uh, references. Armor meant to protect. Instead, destined to afflict. Do neither no more. Oh, that slam poetry. Do you try to haiku? haiku? <laughs> you bring the piece of the broken blade down into this thing, uh, Davy Jones heart style. Nice. Uh, it squeals, flails out, goes limp, and opens like a the dead face hugger of uh, uh, like a face hugger that's died, just kind of like uncurls and goes limp. Okay, you I have three second level spell slots, so I'm going to use that to just get everyone up. Yay! Uh, the cure, uh, don't don't cure worry wounds. about it. Yeah. Uh, and it, uh, the deity king of the Gitzerai has been oh, watching okay. you guys. Uh, cool. you oh, right, hear, that guy. Uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Champions? <laughs> no, um, Heroes uh, for the ages? Challenge, challenge. Not uh, things that are difficult to, to do. Um, Obstacles. No. Quest. Adventure. Checkpoint. Achievement? <laughs> Stop. Tribulations. Trial. Trial. Challenge? No, wait, you said challenge. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Quick, start throwing out random numbers. Everybody loves it. Not opposition. <laughs> Antagonism? You hear in your. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Sorry. We're so unserious. It's such a serious thing that's happening. It's not like we all at least went down once. Most of us are just doing this in our in our unconscious <laughs> <Once>. minds. <laughs> Some of us are psychic canonically, so you know, whatever. Fairly didn't go down. <laughs> Guys, we did it. Right. He turns around, it's just three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did it, Patrick. You, <laughs> you, you guys the all, city. everyone gets one hit. Everyone comes up to one hit point who is unconscious. Yay. Everyone hears in their minds. Obstacles are only ever in the mind. Triumph is only ever attainable 
through will. The power that brought you here before manifests again. The whole room starts to fall away piece by piece, and it is replaced by that chamber that you saw once before. You are once again standing in front of uh, Zareth Menyar at Gith, Ugh. the deity king to the Githzerai. Ooh. Wait for them. He to looks come at up. you. So you guys all saw that says, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just checking. He looks at, well, he doesn't look at you. You hear in your mind the presence, and he says, Shasal Kul. Specifically to Vas. Shasal Kul. You are indeed worthy of my gifts. Your quest worthy of our aid. Vas, he becomes your warlock patron. <gasps> I thought so. Oh! You are officially. <laughs> You are officially a Hexblade? Jesus. Hell yeah. But what is a Hexblade without the blade? <gasps> oh. Magic items. You see the scattered pieces of the sword around you drawn together. You see the Arandor pulled from the bag of holding. Hey, hey. The ore that you have not had anything to do with yet. You see the extra silver sword <laughs> that once belonged to Endelian pulled from a sheath. It wasn't in my inventory anyway. I was wondering where it went. Uh, <laughs> That's how we lost the brooch. I don't know why I didn't put that. It's, uh, I don't know. You, you, you seem to really take fondly to this one. Uh, it's a better sword. It deals way more damage. Better than mine or better than the one that exploded? Uh, better than the, the one that I just took from you. Okay, cool. Uh, the uh, one that exploded all of was these a come together. Sword, by the way, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. It just looks oh, cool. Okay, cool. Material is malleable. You watch as all of them seem to like disintegrate, dissect, pull apart into their base components, and then reform okay. together. A long sword shimmers into uh, existence. Beautiful silver with a black edge all around the outside. Here I gift to you, Vas, redemption, the steel reclaimed. If you would like to go ahead and look, uh, go into uh, search uh, items, Ooh. and you can go ahead. Should be a magic item you have access to. <laughs> redemption, the steel reclaimed. Oh, that's its name. That's not just a cool thing. That's its name. Extremely yes. Cool. Oh, oh yeah, I still haven't named hell. mine. Ah, so yeah. We'll do it later. Oh, Can you find it, Wally? What an edgy yes. <laughs> Alright, why don't you read out what it does? Uh, I have a plus two bonus to attacks and damage rolls nice. made with this magic mm -hmm. weapon. Nice, nice. Um, and that's it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, resurrection. You may use redemption to cast the spell Resurrections with a casting time of one action requiring no material components. Once this has been done, the steel rig claim unlocks its true potential. Oh, so one of us has to. So, so we're not fucking gonna, around this Austin, season. This is gonna kill us, that you is, guys. <laughs> that is a that is that is not a once per day or once per. That is once redemption may cast resurrection. And then it unlocks it does, like, it's it's the true next, the rest form. of its power. <laughs> yes. Wow. Damn. Wow. Must be this dead Boss to continue. <laughs> reaches out, grabs the sword, and says, "Rest easy, my friends. I have new ones to protect." Aww. I think he's gonna fucking kill us. To Danny. Huh? The the Spitfire lifts from oh, your holster. Wait, what? It moves in front of you. You watch as the topaz scale within rotates, changes. The entire uh, weapon elongates, uh, becomes maybe like three feet long. You can look up the Spitfire Annihilator under oh, equipment if you would like that. Sniper rifle? Oh, yo! Oh, this is like that bit in Narnia where Santa gives them all gifts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a musket. Wally, I'm sorry. You got you got to change the drawing to have a fucking sniper rifle and over her shoulder. And to you, Susan, so the gentlest I... among them, I give you the sick-ass rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. If you find the Spitfire Annihilator, this replaces the Spitfire. If you would like to read out what it does, you can. This magic ranged weapon resembles a musket, but in lieu of any ammunition, it holds a glowing yellow scale from the dread Malasibrius. You gain a plus one bonus <laughs> to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. The weapon has a normal range of 100 feet and a long range of 300 feet. 
and it has the two-handed property. It deals 2d6 necrotic damage on a hit. If this damage reduces a creature or object to zero hit points, the target is reduced to dust. Damn. <laughs> Get the fucking Malice Cyprius disintegrate. That's it, terrifying. It Mandalorian guns people. If you if wow. you kill them, it, they disintegrate. Sick. Sick indeed. I just asked for like a fucking spell buff. I, I don't for, get fun. For Virla, materializing from thin air, a pendant with a holy symbol you now recognize well. The silver star on the blue field. You can go ahead and add Amulet of the Devout plus two. To your inventory. Yeah. And to Kiana, mm -hmm. you feel your slippers, your slippers of spider climb, pull at your feet. Huh? What was once careful spider web imagery on the side unfolds into gossamer wings. You now have slippers of flying. Huh? Uh, I forgot to uh, write the rules for that, but you basically get a flying speed uh, once... Uh, I think once a day. I have to double check the magic item it's based on. But I have yes, a flying uh, speed. So can I add that to my... It'll give you a flying speed. Uh, I'm going to adjust that. I forgot to do that before this session. Okay, um, cool, cool, cool. But I will just... Uh, don't worry. I don't suspect you will need it before the uh, this the end of this session. And by the next time, you will have... Uh, basically, they'll function the same as your slippers of spider climb. You don't have to change attunement. Uh, they also grant you a, a flying speed again. I have to check the magic item they're based off of. But <laughs> That's so fun. And... We were just talking about how monk level 9 just gives me the power of the slippers of spider climb, but slightly worse. <laughs> well, that's why I thought that you might want to keep them Aww. and also have a small buff. Thanks. In I know addition, I'm difficult to shop for. <laughs> in addition, he calls to each of you, and he says, Your dedication to the others is admirable. Do not lose such conviction. You each gain, in addition, this is the benefit for Voss choosing dedication to the group. You each Ooh. get a charm. Huh? Uh, a charm a charm is like a potion but it is something innate to you you can't give it to someone else it is a for almost all of these it is a one use ability uh -huh. and it is to cast a spell Ooh. for Voss Ooh. you receive charm of spirit guardians hey once you may cast once you may cast spirit guardians and call on the hallowed halls of Isgard to summon heroic protectors to you that's awesome Danny, you receive Charm of a Shardalon Stride. Once, oh, I, honey, you may call I, upon... I took that spell. God, it's just... the one I've been waiting to use. What, it's what? on my spell list already. So my funny. mistake. We'll pick something else for you, Danny. We'll I'm pick so something sorry. else appropriate. No. I've been sitting on it for like oh, four this is, the, this is the danger of buying presents for yourself around yeah. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Zara, this is great. I just you got know I checked all everyone's spells head, except Danny because I was like I know Danny's spells. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you. We'll get you a new charm it's of okay. something. There's no way Danny could possibly surprise me again. Virla, you receive charm of call lightning. Oh hell oh, yeah! Okay. And the only one that is not a one use, Kiana. Excuse me. You receive charm of misty step. <gasps> oh, three times, so when I was like, please stop putting me in bubbles, you listened. <laughs> three times you may use Misty Step. Once you use these charms, they are gone. They do not ever refresh. Ooh, these are basically boy. consumable magic items that are innate to your character. And we'll pick a new one for Danny. I'm so sorry. And we can't, we can't gift them to others. No. You cannot gift them to others. Mm -hmm. It is an innate thing within you. I almost used that this combat. When I did the fireball in turn one, I almost said a Shardalon stride instead. What does what does it do? Uh, I'm so curious. You'll see. Well, you can wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You'll it's find out. Okay. I'll use it before the end of the campaign. Tension in a narrative format? Gross. Zareth speaks to all of you. I send you now to the next step on your journey. Your allies are in need of you, and you are in need of allies. First, our enemy's plans to wreak havoc on the planescape will need to be thwarted. They seek to unleash destruction. You must prevent it. Then, they will need to be destroyed so that they may not unleash such terrors ever again. You will need to hunt down 
them you will need to hunt down he who leads them in the meanwhile you will need to make ready your vessel so that when comes the time you are ready to give chase to the illithid complete this and trust in your allies to do what they can to help you I go forth now to speak to my kin and send them on our way we will do all we can in your aid you feel the falling away again as the floor begins to crumble beneath you it falls away there there's actually this weird moment where the room itself like starts to fall away and you see the paraspora beneath you like you're being moved out into the paraspora and then the whole thing shifts and instead of oh, being no. moved out into the paraspora in limbo limbo crumbles away fades away there's a brief moment of white and then normal sunlight you hear birds calling there is grass you see in the distance a spire reaching up quite high another one reaching down to meet it the sky oh, above no. you contained with the land of another world you are currently in the twin paradises of bitopia and that is where we're going to outside oh, no. outside of the workshop of casimir oh, no. and that is where we're going to take our break Woohoo! Ah. rolling with difficulty today's adventure was brought to you by world anvil World Anvil is a browser-based world-building and writing tool designed to help you keep all your work organized and in one place. From world maps to timelines and beyond, the site is packed with everything you need to design your world. And when you're ready to write, there's a word processor built right in. With World Anvil, you don't have to create alone. Real-time collaboration allows you to work with your players, co-creators, cat, or whoever in tandem on the same project. If you're a more visual creator, then World Anvil's whiteboards feature is for you. Chart out character arcs, diagrams, mood boards, and more on World Anvil's visual canvas. For our listeners, World Anvil has a very special offer. Just use code PLUG at checkout for 51% off a yearly membership. That's code PLUG, P-L-U-G, at checkout for 51% off a yearly membership. And I would like to give a special thank you once again to World Anvil for sponsoring today's adventure. Rolling with difficulty. And welcome back. Ooh. When last we left our heroes... Everybody got some nice gifts from the deity king of, Get of the Getzerai. Everyone survived the challenge. Mm -hmm. And now, after being told to trust in your allies, you have been brought here, outside the home of Casimir in Bytopia. Aboard your ship, crew of the Prospera, what would you like to do? Oh, as far as any of the characters know, everything's fine. <laughs> but we, yeah. the players, did hear the little <laughs> to be Epilogue. continued at the end of last. We should go say hi. I I have been meaning to uh, do a sending to to Caleb or Sierra and just affirm that they made it back all right. I Danny's been don't meaning have to, to anymore. steal more of his journals anyway. Excuse you don't me? know about that, <laughs> don't I? <laughs> do you think, though? Can we rest a bit? <laughs> My passive perception is very good. Just well, why don't we go in, get some tea and whatnot, or and, uh, chill out inside of a house. Yeah, I can do with a rest of some Okay. Life. All right. You guys get down, go to the front yep. door. I'll uh, take Plug with you me knock. this time. <laughs> okay, Plug is with you. Soak some of the damage you might take. Uh, it's, it's a bit cold. No. Um, right? I... I realize I'm not really wearing a shirt right now. The, the armor is gone. Um, Do you not have any armor? Uh, no. No. Hey, no, uh, no. Virla, do you still have that elf armor from when you were doing that whole what's uh, it? Who's it? What? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's all, I'll, I'll, I'll go find something. Um, no, 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 you're right. It's 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 the most prudent. I go and I, I produce the, the elven chain. Um, this was gifted yeah. to me by space elves. I hope you understand the importance of that. What's space? I don't know what you're talking about. Eh. Astral elves. Okay. <laughs> oh. Sure. Making things up again, I see. Anyways, um, how does this fit? Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. Pull it over your head. Yeah. Right. Okay. I wish I had a character <laughs> to speak. We all know chainmail notorious for its stretchiness, right. comfortable, you know, right, right. breathable like cotton. I actually don't know how this will, how much this will boost your um, thing up, but it, it's a thing that you can equip. So 
if you want to add it to your inventory and, and equip it. Well, as long as my Elven chain AC goes up from eleven, I'll, I'll, that, that'd be nice. Uh, it will. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Is this the first time that your that your bare chest is exposed since ever? Yes. <laughs> hmm. I see why. It's uh, everything. No feels... belly button on Gith because they're born from eggs. <laughs> What's weird oh. is that like he's got like holes where the chitinous Ugh. plate used to be. So like they're paler than he's oh. he's already pale, but like there's like nothing. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's so he's he looks really gnarly right now. Um Yeah, he's he's gonna put some armor on. He's gonna go Are you down. still bloodless Voss or were you only bloodless because of the armor? I'd say you see a little bit more pallor to him. He looks a little bit he looks a little, a little. Well, he doesn't really look healthier. Boss. He had the shit, shit beat out of him, but he Blood looks maybe boss. a touch rosier. Uh, yeah, when he gets back to full HP, it'll it'll be like, wow, who is this guy? <laughs> he's just gonna start bleeding through all those holes. If anything, back. he's extremely bruised right now. Yeah, that's what the color is. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, he's still he's still white and black, except the black is uh, it's his bruises. All right. Hopefully, the elephant chain helps you a bit. <laughs> all right. Um, Fantastic. So you guys get the elven chain. Uh, you head down to uh, the door. Uh, go ahead if you want. You can knock. I'm just gonna walk in. No sense. We're here. <laughs> okay. Uh, you get no response from docents uh, like you have in the past, like you did when uh, from Emmy when uh, you guys first arrived here. Well, that ain't There's just kind of it? no response for five, ten seconds. Do we think Casimir's locked in the closet again? I'm gonna look out the window and see if there's any bones in that choreo. <laughs> <laughs> really, you hear? Really, you hear? If it is, he did it to himself this time. <laughs> <laughs> no blame is going your way, I mean, don't worry. Um, although Dosen doesn't seem the type of person to do so. Although it'd be very funny if it really only took a, a matter of time in Casimir's house that would turn an, an, art, uh, an arcane intelligence into someone who would lock its creator in a closet and uh I guess he's not his I like creator, to think right? so <laughs> I don't I didn't I didn't uh, prepare a knock with me I didn't think I'd have to uh we gotta so... pick a lock I suppose so I mean we can try the door first yeah see if it's locked there, there's a slim chance that because Casimir thought that his house was you know, securely protected with an arcane intelligence, he wouldn't bother locking the door. Try the door. I'll try the door, yeah. Door opens. Oh. Wow, you were right on the money with that. Some sort of Holy genius shit. he is. <laughs> Alright, I guess we just... Swings uh... open to just a, a dark foyer that you've been in before. Docent? <laughs> Caleb? Sierra? Casimir? <laughs> not the dirt cut. Your voice echoes. Docent does not respond to you. None of the arcane intelligence lights up on the walls. Uh, and then you hear a couple footsteps and you hear Caleb's voice. You hear, Virla? Virla, is it you? Caleb comes from around the corner. Uh, kind of, he doesn't breathe, but like the Warford, the, the Mechanite equivalent of out of breath. Uh, and looks at you, looks at everyone. Is that really you? Yes. Uh, Is it really are you okay? You? He runs where's... up as, immediately and gives you a big hug. I, I hug him else? back. Well, uh, where's Sierra? Where's where's Casimir? Is what happened? Come with me. He takes you uh, through the library to the staircase, up the spiral staircase, and into Casimir's workshop where you see standing on one side of the room Sierra, arms folded kind of hunched over, leaning against the wall and in the middle of the floor the uh, body covered with a sheet of who you can only assume is Casimir. Bloody hell. What? I should do Dried Dexter pool of blood please. underneath here. Caleb looks at you guys, uh, looks at all of you, he says our old friend came back. Dexter was here. He was waiting for us when we got back from the wedding. That guy 
does not like artificers. And he took Docent. Yeah. He took Docent. And then he got away. You see, from the other side of the room, Sierra kind of shifts a little bit. She goes, Not all of them. And she tosses something to you, Voss. You Looking catch hard. Voss. You catch it. It looks like, um, at first you think you're holding about, uh, like, a third of an arm, like, hand, and then, like, part of the wrist. Mm-hmm. And then you realize it's mechanical as you, like, turn it over. Mm-hmm. It's not flesh, but it looks that way. It's a bloody arm. Well, we don't bleed, but... That's, it's, I think it's, it's that's more of like it's, a... Right, it's, okay. Um, it's like an adjective. <laughs> It's a gift word. Well, uh, looks like you take something of his, but he took something uh, a little bit more. Uh, who's the friend again? Docent. Not, well, the well, dead guy yeah, is Casimir. Are we talking about Casimir's life or Docent? I, I, I don't know anything about a Docent, but uh, this poor fellow here well, seems to have uh, kicked the bucket. Unfortunate. And I guess uh, this uh, Dexter guy... Uh, Heard about him back at, uh, uh, what's the, what's the city? Um, Tunareth. Uh, back at Tunareth. Uh, doing some yeah. stuff. Not a nice guy, I guess. Uh, he's part of all this, right? With the robots? Yes. Um, I guess to put a long story short, Dexter used to be a part of the crew of the Paraspora. He betrayed a number, he betrayed us. Um, and facilitated an attack in conjunction with the Gith in order to kidnap most of our crew for the purposes of continuing our work in searching for a path out of this universe and into others, but under the strict watch of the Gith Yankee. And now he's trying to continue it. He Do you stole know the- he stole Dosen, which knew the way, and he killed Casimir, who knew what Dosen knew. Oh, great. Okay, it's not good. I, I don't know what half of that means, but, but it's not kill good. me. Okay. He looks up meaningful when on like after he's like he stole the thing that knew like that we learned everything from. He killed Casimir, who knew all that stuff, but he didn't get me. And he looks at you meaningfully, Virla. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was gonna ask. How much were you able to glean in your short time here? We figured it out. Maybe that'll be enough. Uh. It's got to be, because if he's got docent, he knows everything we know. More, in fact. He. And whoever his... Whether it's back to the gith or someone new, whatever he's doing, whoever his, his new partners are, they've got everything they need. And a head start. Not to, you know, do too much of a side thing here, but I happen to have it on good authority that Casimir was pretty meticulous with his notes taking. Is there any chance that those um, journals are left from what you guys were working on? Yeah, we've got notes. So what do we do? Do we go after Dexter and retrieve Docent? Prevent... Uh, whoever Dexter's working with, if he is working with anybody, to prevent them from furthering to this technology further, or do we just endeavor to work faster than they are? Can we do and... anything for Casimir? Well, you're right. I did recently get now, the ability to bring back the dead. That is true, Voss. <laughs> Wally, I don't want you to feel pressured to use the ability you just got uh, on Casimir if Voss even cares enough about this guy to bind part of his soul to his... (laughs) Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I was going to say, that's absolutely a thing you could do. I didn't want... uh, I know that that was... I didn't want you guys to be like, oh, eight of them, you killed him so he can use this. (laughs) Wow, a resurrection ability. Uh, I don't think this... You immediately awaken your weapon and receive it and awaken it instantaneously. uh, uh, I don't think this is it. Yeah. Um... It could unlock more resurrections. <laughs> we could call Hans. Who? You could call up Hans. Hans. He was at the wedding. Would have to uh, there was, perform there was a lot uh, of folks at the wedding. Oh, Chloe right. guy. Sure. You what's know. the What's the time? Li- Hans didn't have. When did Dexter resur- come by and do this? 
This was yesterday. Hans might be able to do something. We wanted to talk to you guys, but we didn't know how to get back quickly. Uh, you, can't, you can't do the thing okay, where you they're losing your head. Mm-hmm. Right? No, you can't do that. The... I think Virla does do that. that. Yeah. I think Virla has I can to do that, that, that too. Is the thing. All, all robots can do well, that? It's not long range. Just the, okay, just the annoying ones. All right. No, it's a Virla. Um, it's more of like a wizard. Virla, thing. you can. Virla, can you go ahead and make me an insight check? Uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> Uh, that's Kiana cool. can, well, anyone can roll one as well if you'd like, but I yeah. definitely want one from Virla. Nine. <laughs> nine? Nine is, nine is tough. Other I'm sorry, than... did you say anyone can roll an insight check? <laughs> anyone <laughs> can roll one if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. Go sorry, ahead. I would sorry. also like to roll an insight check. <laughs> yeah, go for it. I guess Virla's a little shaken up. Like, yeah, Casimir was an asshole, but he didn't want him to be a dead asshole, you know? <laughs> 27. 19. It's pretty good. 19. On a 27, Kiana. Yeah. First off, on a 19, Danny. As problem solver, you were sent here. You were sent here specifically by a, like, DD oh, small. Oh, right, yeah. Char- like, a, a, an extremely knowledgeable character who knew everything about you guys when you came in. He did not send you here for no reason. He did not send you here just because the guy you knew was dead and something separate was going on that, you know, for you to get involved with. Kiana. You realize the same thing. Mm-hmm. If he sent you here, this moment is crucial to the quest you are on. This moment right. is crucial to the goal he wants you to achieve. He said you would have to prepare the ship he said you were going to have to find the Illithid. Right. If this is where he sent you, if this is the next step, then there's only one logical place that uh, Dexter could have gone with Docent. He can't have gone off plane? Or... He can have gone off plane. There's only one, there's only one logical party for him to be working with if Zareth Menyara Gith omnipotent being that he is sent you here yeah to learn this he's working with the illithid that yes. that would make sense yeah <laughs> okay okay well he turned mm-hmm. coat from one side to the other and i yeah. think that that becomes obvious to kiana yeah virla well, you recall is, yeah the notes you read on the nautiloid last season refer to the body of the betraying scourge and Delian reveals secrets worked on by our enemy. They seek to find new places to scour. Their arrogance is their undoing. We will learn these secrets now renegade we know. Mm. They learned everything Delian knew, which included the mission to get you guys off the ship. The original attack on the Paraspora that killed Emerson. The... Uh, assault on Tunareth by you guys, kidnapping or rescuing the rest of your friends and <laughs> Dexter's involvement. No right. kidnap backsies. It was sort of kid. It was like a, like a voluntary kidnap. We already kidnapped them. You can't kidnap them back. <laughs> it's re-kidnapping. Right. So. <sighs> okay. Well, I guess it's nice to know that we're not working against two different enemies. Right now, they just happen to be two really nasty ones. Enemy of the enemy, as it were. I think Dexter's living on the enemy of your enemy is the friend. The friend of your enemy is also your enemy. (laughs) (laughs) Dexter's working with people that can't physically control him or convert him, so he probably knows that they're gonna kill him eventually if they get the chance. As soon as he stops being useful, they won't be able to do anything else with him. Yeah, this is not true. Uh, Dexter looks at you, um, and he says, Dexter? Sorry, not Dexter. Dexter, <laughs> Dexter in the comes room right the now. Sorry. I was no, like, which of these fuckers is Dexter in disguise? Caleb was standing. I was like, Caleb that's looks some at you. constant rogue pose right there. <laughs> De- uh, Caleb looks at you, and he says, Dexter's always got something. 
he's always got an escape route or a second plan or the upper hand. That was his whole job on the Paraspora originally. He was the guy who lied for a living. So he knows what he's if getting If he's dealing into. with them, I'm not saying that he's not in over his head, but he definitely doesn't think he is. If he's got a back door against them, it might be something we can use too. Possibly. Not to um, completely overwrite the importance of, uh, no, all of our bad guys are working together, but uh, we do have a deceased artificer in the room. Yeah. You hear uh, Sierra says, Do you know if he had anyone we should tell? Oh god, do we know that? We didn't really know him super well. <laughs> Was there anything in those journals I don't know about? <laughs> uh, I kind of retreat into the back of my mind and probe Emmy as to what she thinks about this. Can Voss start looking around for a shovel? I never wanted him dead. Oh god. <laughs> I'm sorry, We're going to get the guy who did this, right? Oh, yeah, right? yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, help me get a shovel. we got to get this poor guy a uh, proper burial. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help out with that. Um, while we're the garden doing... outside. Perhaps There's the garden. garden inside. Does this place still have a facility to put Emmy in a body of her own? You can... Wait, who's who's Emmy? Who, who are these people? Oh, my God. Girl has got a friend in his head. Yeah. Wouldn't that it's okay, leave? I don't know half the lore either, but I do know who Emmy is. That's, yes. It's... All right. Vila she used talks to be the to house, her. and now she's, she's an arcane in... intelligence. Well, I thought I he was an arcane you. intelligence. It's a blurry area. No, he's a person. Okay. All right, all right, okay, great. Um, sure. We're just, I'm just people. saying, the last time we were here, Emmy turned into a big robot and nearly killed us, uh, but that could be good again. Casimir you know? dismantled that, but, I mean, that's not to say that it couldn't be done again. Also, right. though, my understanding is... And it was a kill me. bot. Look, I like Emmy as much as the next guy, but that thing was a kill bot, okay? I'm deeply familiar. Yeah, but now uh, she has a vengeance see, that quest. This is not so... like a bad thing to have. I... I think maybe we're getting see? too caught up in the let's create a killer robot of it all. Uh, to... We need to create it. She already exists. When we were here last time and Emmy had a robot body, Virla also had Docent in his head. And my understanding, based on your memory loss, Virla, is that Docent and or Emmy is very important to you continuing to function as po best as possible in your brain. Uh, I suppose to some extent, it's... but even if Emmy were to be removed, I could still revert back to my memory spheres. It's not that the technology was... It's not that that technology was faulty, uh, technically speaking. <laughs> I guess, but, like, Noir, doesn't Emmy give you, like, extra spells or something like that? Or, like, extra abilities? It does, but... I mean, does, know. but he's also starting to run low on attunement. Mm. Yeah. Is it worth more than having a friend kill a robot? All right, ah, found, found the shovel. Perhaps, p perhaps uh, graduating to a, a body is not yet in store, but I'm not opposed to the idea of transferring Emmy out somewhere else. Um, not the house. I, I doubt once we find any, once we've buried Casimir and we find everything that's useful here, I don't imagine we'll be returning. Can we turn the house into a robot? Let's... When you say, Virla, when you say the, like, we'll find a new thing for Emmy, uh, Caleb looks at you, he says, hold that thought. Were you thinking of something anyway. already, Caleb? <laughs> I mean, it seems like we're all kind of in Barry Casimir mode, and uh, I don't want to turn us into work mode too soon. I don't want to, like, be that guy, you know? Right. Fair enough. Let's yeah. give the poor guy his respects. Yeah. And would you look at that second shovel? Here you go. I'll pass one over to uh, Kian. <laughs> Thank you. You guys find a nice spot. There's a beautiful blossoming pink tree out in the garden. There were some bones there before. <laughs> <laughs> there were some bones there before. Now there's more bones. Uh, Barry Casimir, one knife wound right in his back. Mm. Uh, do I have press the Does anyone Can have I... anything they do that's special? In the city of Brass, we light our dead on fire, so if no one else has any <laughs> suggestions, I can. But uh, I don't know if that's I don't the think custom that was the custom. I don't, I don't think, think that was the custom just... here in Bytopia. I have this feeling that if, Kas if Casimir could speak right now, he wouldn't be like, please, 
let Danny set me on fire. I'm offering one last time. The... <laughs> it's the right that my culture does. I don't know. I just... What do you guys do? I come back in the morning. Okay, this is an unhelpful group. Uh, Sira and <laughs> I think the monks uh, mostly just got dumped down a hole. So oh, God, we're all so well He's is slowly digging this oh. hole. By the way, he's, he's just yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kiana's digging the grave. I think I would defer because I don't feel like Danny really knew Casimir all that well, or she didn't really like him all that much. So I would she'd probably be hanging back and deferring to like Caleb and Sira who were spending actual Look, time with him if they had anything. I have no problem with burning him alive. Yeah. Uh, burn, he's dead. Uh, I'll have well, no problem burning the body as long as it's uh, in respect to the life he lived and the legacy he had and uh, I think this is deep enough right? Yeah? Okay. Probably. Yes. H- how about we just bury him? Sure. I'll pay our last respects and then we can think about transitioning to other ventures but you guys bury him gently beneath the tree. A guy that you didn't really know very well. Maybe you didn't really have any intention of knowing very well. But it's clear now that for whatever whatever tragedies, whatever burns and, and, and price that may be paid that you have dodged up until this point that this thing going on spreads so wide is such a vast conspiracy of problems of uh, of things to be overcome that you simply can't put out every fire but you can try i turn to caleb and sierra once casimir is buried and i offer if they have anything they want to say i offer the same to emmy Come up with three eulogies, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, Caleb says, "Yeah, all right. Um, I didn't know you well, but you took us in after the unthinkable happened, when we had nowhere else to go. Help me with a problem that's been bothering me for a long time. And uh, well, I'm not sure I could have asked for kind manners on top of that. What you did was plenty." And I hope that, as a petitioner, you find yourself somewhere good. Sierra steps up. She says, You were a very sweet, funny guy. I'll miss you. Emmy says, Just to you, Virla. I don't know if I have the concept of parent. But he was definitely the closest thing it would be. It's strange not having anywhere to put the feelings. I can't cry. But I'm glad I still have you, Vian. I'm glad I have you as well. Thanks for taking me in, because without you I wouldn't have anything anymore. I would do it again without a second thought. Casimir, we were not alike in spirit, but we were alike in mind. You did not have to take on this responsibility, and Mistra knows you most likely did so because it was just another problem you wanted to solve. But you did so all the same, and you paid a price that should have been dealt to us. The work that you did to further this goal will be remembered. The vengeance that we will bestow is in your name. Rest well. Does anyone else have anything to say? I'm sorry I couldn't protect you either. I didn't know the guy. He seemed awfully important. For that, he has my respect.
I don't think Danny says anything, but I think she's sort of mulling over in her mind, like, this quest really is pretty lethal to artificers. Maybe there's something to the kind of single-minded pursuit of the mysteries of the universe that is maybe blinders on at times, but he was good at the research. All right. Fade to black, everyone pick up we respectfully we'll inside of the, the study. <laughs> respectfully loot the place. Lock this body's just lying us. there, right? Bones. Loot that no. body. It's under the dirt. We buried him correctly. I do intend to take every single one of his journals and shove them in the bag of holding, but that's unrelated. I was wondering if it's like, she's going to like leave the journal on the grave? And I was like, absolutely not. There's valuable information that's, in there. I, I thought about it. I'm like, mm, but it's important to read the information. That's in the <laughs> it's like lay it down and then like come back five minutes later. Like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Haven't Finally, finished the hundreds of pages yet. of lore, I can email them to you. You joke, but I'm the person who reads every book in Skyrim. So I would actually love that. <laughs> Yeah, that's Why psycho you... shit. This, this is true. I sent her a bunch of lore for, for our home game, and she read all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to me. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, that was fun and cool. <laughs> Not like the books in Skyrim. <laughs> anyway. Nothing funner and cooler than com completionist attitudes towards, like, a 12-year-old game. Pick back sure, up everyone in the cool. in the library sitting around a table that's there. Uh, any hot drinks you would like to be partaking of uh, available to you? Caleb says, "Yes, any yes, any alcohol that you would like to be drinking instead also viable." Uh, Caleb says, "So we're all agreed we're gonna get him, right?" Of course. We were gonna do that anyway, but but perhaps, now I'm sadder about it. <laughs> but perhaps, um, as far as the order of operations of things are concerned, uh, such revenge will not be immediate. He's in the uh, path of the shit we got going on anyway, I feel like. Whether we directly believe... attack him or oh, not. I think whether we find him or the Mind Flayers, they, they go, hmm? we're all almost in the same place. The question is, uh, yeah. It's a two for one. Uh, I believe first. The question though, is where, and the answer is uh, where no one in the Planescape has gone in a very long time, by my understanding. Do you have an idea where they are, or is that just cold reading? They're trying to leave. Why else would he steal Dosen? Team up with the Unfathomable. They're trying to get out of the Planescape. That was the plan all along. That was the Prosperous plan, and then it was what his work was with the Gith. I doubt he's changed gears now. Is there a place in the Planescape that's closer to the outer edge? Mm. We'll get to that. But if we're going to get to that, we've got some work to do. You see, he pulls out some paper. He looks at Virla and Danny. He goes, We're doing this? I take out my tool belt. <laughs> Finally, Ready things that are, I Captain. understand. He's going to take this piece of paper and he's going to fold it in half and he's going to take a pencil and poke <laughs> it through. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be like, You he's see, that's how that. we can. We're yeah, way yeah. past. All right. He starts jotting down notes and t speaking quickly, he looks between the two of you says, all right, if we're going to actually get them, like for real, actually get them, first thing we're going to need on the long list of things, you're going to need to make the ship pilotable by an arcane intelligence. Yeah. Luckily, that's the easy part. All it's going to take is a lot of time and a bunch of work. <laughs> but we've already got one. So the hardest part's done. He looks at you, Virla. Emmy, do you want to be a ship? <laughs> I mean, I thought I'd go with something slimmer for my first body but it kind of feels right the Prospera is beautiful you hold your tongue <laughs> and it has a flamethrower now that's true and it has a flamethrower now and like a hologram deck of some kind uh I don't <laughs> definitely can't stop her if you make her the ship <laughs> yeah fair enough we could have what's next uh, then we could have holodeck ME right. too so we're integrating oh, yeah. that was gonna take time I can do it I'm going to need help, but that's doable. Then we're going to need some sort of shielding. At the speed you're going to need to go to crack this, your wait, ship's wait, just going to break, come apart before you even get wait, close to breaching the blue veil if you don't. What? what, what? This is... 
I, 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 yeah, man. Yeah, this I is thought this serious. was a metaphor this is, this for guy. something. <laughs> uh, I... Voss, no, Voss, oh, no. no. Literally, multiversal travel is on the on the precipice of being unlocked. The mind flayers allied with Dexter are aiming to be the first to crack it and thus destroy either several planes in our planescape or the entire planescape in the process of doing so. We need to beat them to the punch. If it wasn't and abundantly clear, everything that this crew does is incredibly literal. Fuck. I'm sorry, the crew is a ship? The ship is the crew? <laughs> you were the one who didn't get that. I think I was being very clear. <laughs> Boss! I don't... Let's go, let's go Sierra, punch things. do you want to go oh, yeah. outside? I like What's where next after are. Emmy? The shielding. All right, shielding. The shielding. At the speed you're going to go, the ship's going to explode before you even... At the speed you'll need to go, the ship will explode before you even reach them. You're going to need shielding of some kind. Something that can withstand a lot of shit. Something like perhaps... River of Sticks-esque shit or like literal physical force? Uh, little column A, little column B. I got the sticks part covered. Mm-hmm. You do, uh, you do also have, it's currently powering a bike, but you do have a thing that you know was meant to be used oh, yeah. as shields oh, yeah. for mm -hmm. ships traveling through the chaos of the abyss. It's true, we could retrofit the, chaos orb. the Anarch Orb. The Anarch Orb, excuse me, yes. He says, and then Caleb says, which brings me to the speed. If you're going to do this, you're going to need speed. Like, Way faster than any normal spell jammer. You don't hit those speeds. When you reach the edge, you're gonna splatter. Terrible. Which brings us to the actually hard part. All of that other stuff, it's just difficult. But possible. All of this, though, doesn't matter if you don't have a runway long enough to build up the speed you're going to need. We've run the math from Dosen when he was here. Whatever the cosmic law, whatever physics is banning people from leaving the planescape, you can't do it via the Astral Sea. The Blue Veil will stop you. Which means, if it's going to work at all, there's only one other logical place to do it. The only other infinite plane. If you're going to do this, you're going to have to sail down the abyss. Like, all the way. <laughs> down the Hell six. yeah. <laughs> Hell Look, yeah. Uh, I know I signed up but for this. this. Baby, so I know I signed up for this. Some serious shit. But I'm having second thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> the abyss. Yeah, yeah, you and me both. What's a more Boss, heroic you... death than smashing the bits because we missed a turn in the abyss? Come on, it'll be fun. The immortal leader of. Well, that's why you're gonna need the AI to pilot it. Otherwise, it's gonna be going way faster than anyone else could react. The, Voss, if you have any doubts, the immortal leader of the Gizderai, in addition with Mistra herself, are essentially tasking I, us. I got with that this. part. Um, if you doubt, if you doubt your capabilities, trust in their capabil trust in their trust in you. Uh, but also, we help get that armor off you, so you owe us one. Yeah, wow. I was gonna say. You yeah. Yeah. Who actually likes and trust God? God. Saying I'm so against. interesting. Uh, this is an order from your captain, and we're doing this. So you either get on board <laughs> or you get off the crew. I just want to make sure we all just understand. Just asking follow-up questions? All this is batshit crazy. Right? Yes? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we've done yeah. stupider. Yes. But it's cool, though, right? We've, we've had several right. months to internalize. No judgments. I understand that this is very new for you. No judgments just think about on all the other planes that could be out there. when it comes to we contributing did. to this, okay? Just saying. It's all batshit crazy. You can't judge me when I do the same. Would it make you feel any better if we told you that we already broke the weave once? So this is really just. I, I, like, I, I can't. I, I can't do this right now. I, I was this just is... fearless, though. Okay. Okay. The weave is. Yeah. One let's thing, go outside. Let's get some fresh air. Let's maybe spar uh, a little bit. You can show off your cool new sword. One other thing, Caleb. I is there anything? Point. Is there anything that you can do with a uh, a spell that it can effectively create spell jammers? Um, <laughs> is this like a hypothet? Sounds like what I could do with that is create spell jammers. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I mean, multiple spell jammers are needed in this endeavor. Yes, yes they are. Oh. Unless you um, want a spell jammer. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want a spell jammer? It's so like asking if I want like a million gold, of course. Do you, are you... 
What have you oh. been up to since the wedding? We <laughs> bought a really nasty robot thing. Uh, we, yeah, we had we... a similar situation here. Oh, when I was plunging yeah. in one of the Mind Flayer no, ships, okay. I may or may not have come across some... Um, a lot more explicit information about how they make the things that they make. We broke some kind of universal law figuring it out, and then we all had to fight a big robot about it. And then we killed oh, the good. manifestation. So this thing that we're about law. to try will be the second universal. This is law great. Making. Well, ah, uh, I have one in a rematch though, so that works great. Uh, okay, all right. This is great. This is great. Um. All right, okay, anyone who is, is not great. actively helping us draw up diagrams for how to uh, uh, soup up the Paraspora, go hit things outside, because we got it. I've been trying to, like, guide the tanks out the door <laughs> so we can just hang out, have some fresh air, All right. be in our feelings a little bit. <laughs> Let's focus, one thing I at a time. I don't breathe. Shield. Wait, hold on, I give Sierra a hug. Uh, we're <laughs> kind of caught up in the moment, but it's just, I'm, I'm glad that you're okay. <laughs> Me too. So we gotta make okay. a shield. We gotta Go hit stuff. Hugs you. Get yeah, really fast. We gotta uh, integrate Emmy, Emmy into, into the, the ship. Those are so the that, three yeah. biggins. Yeah. Those are the three biggins. So it seems like you already have an idea for the shield. Bits and pieces that I'm sure Danny can hodgepodge together into Probably something. Probably come up with something, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from a DM to player perspective, it sounds like you're interested in getting in uh, proofing the ship the way that you know you can uh, with the slot control gem, so that would be the missing piece cool. that you would need to get for mm -hmm. that. I have a slot control gem already. Uh, you have a slot control gem? Yeah, I picked one up. Yeah, well, from, from uh, the slot brain gem. Yeah, the brain gem. From yeah. the one mission that I didn't get paid, from I got an object in a... Pandemonium, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot it? about that. Sweet, so you already have that. So that's good news. Uh, the speed is going to be something that you uh, are going to have to come up with some plans for. New variant of the trench um, run unlocked. <laughs> but, yes, new variant of the trench run unlocked. Exactly. So, you're going to have to do that. Uh, you have interest uh, the, okay. You have interest in creating new spell jammers. That is an expensive endeavor but could aid you in any myriad of ways. Giving, you know, allies the ability to traverse the planes quickly and easily could be huge. You know lots of people you could be calling for such a task. What if to we do could that, turn you're going to need the entire a bunch of the shit ton of money citadel yeah. into a spell jam. <laughs> like a giant <laughs> moving city. They could already move the city if they wanted. I'm not here. It's fine. The... the, 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 uh, the the material components required to create spell jammers. Uh, I think we would have better fare going to a plane literally made of gold coins, essentially, in order to get our funding rather than doing odd jobs here and there. Elemental the time power. and tedium of which I don't think is viable given our uh, desire to be hasty. Fair enough. Speaking of hasty, like I said, I know how to, and I can show anyone how to put Emmy into the ship, but that is going to take time. Legit some time. Like, days minimum, weeks, depending. So, I'm gonna need help. Uh, and unless you guys give up everything you're doing to help with it, I'm gonna need other help. Sierra's gonna be no help at all. B-team, B-team. I would... I, Danny would like to like, be like hands on for helping the fix the ship, but if we are looking for suggestions Action. of places where there are a lot of people who know how to repair spell jammers, I'm just saying, uh, I might happen to so, know and be closely related with one of the premier workshops of the city of Brass. <laughs> well, I mean, if that's true, uh, also DM'd players, you do have a decision to make. From my, there, there are probably other ways to go, but from my point of view, here are three big choices you could make regarding the problem you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. One, you could travel to the Heap, who will have the ability and the manpower to help um, enchant the Paraspora with the AI. They will be able to get it done the fastest. You will have to pay them, and that is the most that they will be able to do, is... is help with that you could 
uh, travel to Hira, who could with, uh, outfit you with as much money and supplies as you need for this task. The manpower would be extremely low. Or you could travel to Maxim, who has... He studied Docent. He knows he can help enchant. He won't do it as fast as... He can't help do it as fast as the Heap, but he can do it a lot faster than just, like, uh, Caleb doing it on his own. He also has material wealth. Not as much as Hira, but he has some. All of these people will need may need various bits of convincing, but those are the options, from my point of view, that you have. I'm sure there are other ones, too, that you feel free to suggest. But from as players, those are the options ahead of you for what path you could take. Yeah. I, w I was just going to kind of recommend we sneak Roy out and just have him help. But <laughs> no, I, yeah, I agree. Having the too. entire heap help would be yeah. valuable. I think I feel like Maxim's a good bet, though. <clears throat> I know that it's complicated with him right now, but he knows more about you don't Docent. Know, you don't know anything about that. <laughs> I'm just, if he and Dex if Dexter's insight, going after tell. people who have information, who he knows have had Docent, Maxim is one of the only people like that. I guess, like, question to the DM as a player, because, like, I think Danny would be very hesitant to just hand the upgrades and construction of the ship over to someone else wholesale. Like, I think she would want her hands on it. Is your intent for us to, like, leave the ship with someone and do the repairs, or is it, like, we could be actively, like, we sh should plan on being actively involved in it? Does that make sense? Uh, it could it could go different way. Like, Danny, yes. Like, from a role play perspective, Danny's definitely going to have a hand in it. Whether you ever need to leave the ship behind to go do things, like, that might be true. If you leave it at the heap, the whole heap can't come with you. If you go to Maxim, Maxim may refuse to come with you, <laughs> come with you to, like, do stuff on the ship. If you go to Hera, then it's just up to you and Caleb, in which case Caleb can come with you on the ship. You can take the ship anywhere, but then, like, that's that's time, right? That's, I guess that's your, like... your maxing out your time thing by having just he and you work on it. I used to open up to the players like do we want to leave the ship somewhere and go do other things like using portals or other methods of transportation while this is happening or are we trying to like go say we'll hunker down for a few days do the thing move I on. think the sooner we can get the ship working the better but I also I'm so happy that we're not working for auto anymore that I kind of don't want to send it back to the heap immediately <laughs> Personal bias, I don't mind. It's fun. I mean, valid. I have always fixed the ship at the heap, and if I'm gonna be doing that again, that's my preferred place to do it. But if you guys think that there's more value to Maxim, he's probably more skilled in the. Pers I was the best artificer the heap had, and uh, I go where the ship goes now. So, if we think Maxim's the way to go, I'm not against it. Uh, is there, is there a possibility that, um. Is there a possibility that Danny goes? Danny stays with the Paraspera back at the Heap, and part of us sourcing out the money to pay the Heap, uh, we perhaps would take us down a route in which Maxim is kind of an intermediary stop along, or here or here. Yeah, whatever you guys want to do. I, this I, is, I do you think know, this is your game. <laughs> well, yeah. However, you guys want to want to do it. You know, this is not as black and white as cheap press a b or c there could be some combination here i just want you to know the options mm -hmm. that you know that i as a dm believe in there may be other ones i haven't even thought of so you know you can always pitch them to me but i, I always yeah. want you guys to okay. know the options that i think could work mm. i know danny wants to stay but like you know if you decide to just spend the whole time if you don't want danny to leave the ship and you don't want the ship to if you don't want someone else to work on the ship without Danny like you don't want Danny to leave the ship behind and you're like uh, and Danny doesn't want the crew to go off without her then you're going to need to get it done quickly which means you're you're looking at uh, either hiring the heap to do it or going to Maxim and getting his expertise those are your two faster options okay uh Go for the either of those options. Is this just for installing Emmy, or is this for all of the other subsequent upgrades as well? Yes, Dan Danny is gonna have to figure out the speed and the shielding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean all of you, but you know Danny's your artificer. Mm -hmm. The the those things are considered difficult but manageable by a single person to do. Okay. Like think of like um, the, the, 
the re the the incorporating an, a, uh, an arcane intelligence to the ship is like a mm. stupid man hours undertaking. It yeah. involves carving a bunch of s- runes and, s- and arcane sigils, sigils <laughs> all over the surface of the ship. So it's just going to take a shit ton of time. Okay. That's why. If we're if we are the characters coming at it from the perspective of we're going to go do this prayer, it's going to take time. We might need to do other stuff in the interim, and that means that Danny will go with the crew. Danny would then be pretty hardline, like, oh, we should take it at the heap because I know how they work and I want people I know mm-hmm. touching the ship. But again, I, if other characters disagree, I would love to hear the. I, so I mean, the char- the player I mean, is not the captain, married to that. So but. hear hear the arguments and then make the decision. You know, is it also possible that like Danny stay behind to? Because I can envision a scenario where it's like we go to the heap and then we get our quote. We gotta figure out how to scrounge up the money for it, and so while Danny and the Heap are are, are upgrading the ship, the the rest of us are are out getting the money somehow, basically. I mean, whether it's uh, whether, whether like Otto has a, whether has a, whether whether Otto has a job in store for us, or we can convince Maxim or Hira to give us some of their gold or something like that. I Maxim guess. would have the additional uh, boon of of just of knowledge, essentially. Um, I mean, it's certainly possible. I think player character line blurring a little bit here like i would probably if 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 multiple episodes are going to go by and the ship is going to be getting mm-hmm. under repairs and we have to leave it with someone and then the crew is adventuring Damn, i would sense. probably yeah not stay with it because yeah. i wouldn't want to sit mm-hmm. out multiple episodes but um my my understanding it would be it was imagine a- imagine these are like errands right imagine that the ship being worked on if it takes hypothetically it takes a week you guys could travel out for a little bit to do the thing you have to do get the magic item learn the secret whatever it is you have to do then you can travel back and you would only be gone for a few hours probably and Danny can keep working right the this intention isn't... the the assumption is that we will finish installing Emmy within the span of one episode the assumption is that you will finish installing uh, Emmy last probably because that's going to take the most time oh Okay. Yeah. So it's going to take the course of a few episodes for, I mean, unless you want to spend a whole one whole episode doing it, but then you've wasted, you've used a bunch of time, right? And you could of course do that. There are there's ticking clock for these things, right? Mm. So you will use this much time, and then you'll have to do the other stuff after, as opposed to it takes this much time and you accomplish things during it. I, I turn to Danny and I say, like, I understand. I understand how important this is to you. Um, we were told, advised really, to trust in our allies. One might say that this is one of those instances. I guess my question to you would be, which ally are you referring to? Because in my mind, the workers of the heap are a bunch of our allies. But if you're saying that in this instance, you would I like agree. me to trust in no, Maxim. No, I agree, I agree with you. No, 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 I agree with it. Well, I, I was more saying if... I was more referring to your desire to stay to fix the ship uh, and, and be at the ship while the repairs are being done, which would deprive us of, of a captain while we could be doing other things. I agree with you, and that probably the fastest and most efficient way to install Emmy would be via the heap. And no doubt Otto would have several jobs and or money uh, quotas that we would have to uphold, too. I'm sure his price will be high. It'll either be a favor he needs or just a lot of gold, whatever that is. That's the price of doing business now that we own the ship. But uh, personally, I would like to go to the heap. If there is no argument against it, I think that that's what we should do, and that's what I would drive us to do, because I know how they work. I know they work well, and if we do have to go run any errands, I feel much more comfortable leaving the ship with people who I know know how to handle it and fix it up than some uh, loner wizard who won't leave his tower or a guy who's just very rich, you know? No, I agree. I mean, did you see how Maxim tried fixing that staff? I don't. I wouldn't trust I, him with the ship. That man can't get near my ship, are you kidding me? He couldn't even fix one magic item. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it to his face. It seemed like he was really invested in it, but... He was so bad at it. Yeah. Okay, so the heap. Yeah. I, I, I apologize, Kiana, but is, is this something you're comfortable with? No, it's all right. 
I know you don't like Otto, but I would like to remind you all that you actually don't work for him anymore. So if you don't want to interact with him, just don't interact with him. I know I it's great. It's yeah. I mean, I'm also a little bit worried about Maxim. That's all. I think you know we don't know exactly where Dexter and the Mind Flayers are targeting next. If Maxim is all by himself, um, but if we're gonna have a little bit of time, maybe we could check in on him anyway. Did, did, that is. A I good forgot. Did, Maxim so low. Did Voss get paid it's for? It's just uh, him in that big tower uh, with maladaptive coping them? mechanisms. <laughs> No, he didn't get paid for rescuing. Well, none of us Boss, really. Not that I'm against. None of us got paid not for that I'm against. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> not that I'm against it, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to invoice the person who had just died uh, via uh, Ceramorphosis. Uh, uh, I wasn't going to do all that. I, I, I was under the impression that I was hired. It was uh, like, shake a hand. It's okay. I can let it go. No problem. I, it'd be nice to see the boss man again. Uh, Odo seems like an uh, upstanding fella. I like him. Of course. We'll see if we can't pick you up some odd jobs while we're in Brass. Oh, I'll, I could use a job. I've got, he turns out his pockets, uh, fly, buzzes <laughs> out. Moth flies yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, I've got no go. We should talk about starting a party fund now that we own the ship. That's a problem for later. Yeah. Do you guys not have money? Uh, we have. I have money. Why does the little one have everything? She's got, she had two swords. She's got all this gold, apparently. She's pretty frugal. Right, so money aside, uh, we're going to the heap. We're going go to go uh, turn to the robots. Be like, we're going to the city of brass. Uh, I used to work for this place called the heap. There's a lot of mechanics and artificers there. They know what they're doing. Basically, get us the most crew and the, the fastest heap? turnaround. Look, don't make fun of the name, all right? We did, that's how I fixed this hunk of junk up. <laughs> Caleb looks at me and he goes, he goes, the heap is the place with the best crew and the fastest turnaround in the famed city of brass? Well, we you got to You got to down... You, you gotta downplay yourself uh, on the outside so that you can really hike up the prices when you end up doing yeah, your job well. Low, expe low expectations. Okay, high, yeah, uh, so do they do hike they up the prices? Is that something we should also be concerned about? Be kind of fun to bring somebody who just has absolutely no open respect for Otto. <laughs> that would be kind of fun. One of the only perks of having been adventurers is that we do have a fair amount of gold, so price will probably mm -hmm. be high, but it'll be the best and probably fastest crew we can get our hands on in the next couple days. As long as we don't have to get any more Zardazil, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Jobs All in agreement? Good. All right. All right. Let's cool. do it. Or I can uh, cross another plane of existence off my list. Plane of fire. Oh, yeah, I forgot <laughs> you weren't with us the last couple times you went. Um, No. No, have not. All right. Are you guys going to sail there, or are you going to use the um, uh, oh, yeah, Danny's the amulet. amulet to get? That could be there? something we could do as well. Like, right. while <laughs> we don't even as part need of our upgrades, the yeah, you guys get can around just to blip it. anywhere you we need. We don't even now. need the ship. Yeah. Look at us. Why don't we use the amulet to get right there and just start the repairs asap? And then, because if it's going to be going mm. for a couple days, we mm. can always use the amulet of the planes to go somewhere else or um, that's true. Leave the ship, but I think the sooner we get the ship started working on the better, right, for the timeline. Right. Um, I agree. Yes, don't also wait. Also yeah. yeah, and then we can all get a long rest. Yeah. I might actually still have a room with... I don't know if I still have a room at the heap. Hmm. Can we not sleep on the ship here. while they're working on it? You have a room here! Yeah, Danny, did you really even keep your room at the heap once you moved onto the ship? Like. I mean, I had a... I imagine all the rooms at the heap are just sort of like alcoves in the piles of shit, and I imagine one of them was just Danny's alcove. And I don't think anyone would have taken it over. <laughs> Who would have cleaned that out, you know? Could have been bulldozed and moved. Oh, I don't know. This is possible. so sad. Egan would just sit in there for a bit because he misses you. So it's old Miss trash? <laughs> you really gonna say that to my face right after another dead artificer showed up in the pursuit this of was my noir. player this quest? This was more saying. <laughs> you really gonna noir. say that to your friend, yeah, the other artificer who died in, in the pursuit of the mind player quest? <laughs> That's three artificers that have died in the pursuit of the mind player quest. This is the most lethal. One of them got better. This is the most <laughs> occupational hat, like the highest lethality <laughs> occupational hazard of all time. Wait, are you including Danny in that? <laughs> Nothing is more dangerous than being campaign, an, artificer an artificer in the playscape right now. <laughs> or you you got to set up a thing in the heap where it's like days without mind flare accidents. <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
You really want to look me in my uh, eyes and just say my greatest trauma right to my face? <laughs> this was noir! Viral would never say that! <laughs> well, all right. Oh, uh, I'll be taking a nap and ship. Let me know when we get there. Yeah, it'll We're gonna be, be there immediately. So you guys go to sail oh, there? Right, okay. Uh, yeah, just work uh, around I think, us. I, I think plane shift there. Okay. Because we also still... Yeah, okay. plane shift there, and then... Before we go, can I take all the journals of Casimir's and shove them in the bag of holding so that we have all of the associated reading yes. we need so to do? So anything anyone wants to do, you can take all of Casimir's journals. I don't really know what you have to accomplish with them, but uh, maybe they could be a good resource. Well, he wrote down all those notes on Awakening, I bet, when he was working on the plane uh, shifting and all that. He, he was did, taking yes. notes. It'd be good to have a reference point. This is not an insane... This is not the most insane thing I've ever Danny's said to do on this podcast. Yeah, that this is a very true. reasonable Danny's, course that of action. Is true. <laughs> Danny's going to make Voss's sword intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caleb right. and Sierra are joining us, I, I assume. I assume Caleb we're and not Sierra leaving are both coming with you. The dead guy. They might yeah. kind of just They're own the house of the dead guy now by right of no one else seeming to exist or know where it is. I don't know if that's how it works in Bytopia. Mm. You guys have too much. You're, you're too obsessed with how laws work. Like. <laughs> Who is keeping track of it? Who has a deed to this oh. house? No one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we keep guys. going back to Sigil, where if we break the law too hard, we get transported to the but infinite pain maze. <laughs> well, yes, yes, yes. But that's <laughs> that's, that's different. different than bureaucracy. And then we Some went to that place where they had like 80,000 parking obsessed with bureaucracy. citations. People talk about owning the ship, too. <laughs> They're like, oh, well, well, how does Otto own the ship if he found it? It's like, we what do you mean? Who does it? Who, no, one, oh, who's, no one's coming around. He just... <laughs> Merit like it's not like real world we to, modern we day went to where there's like a, there's like a chain of evidence about who oh. owns things. I just when you don't find understand stuff, why these players are so hung up on rules <laughs> <laughs> in this game system. Anyway. rules on how to play. All right. <laughs> so Danny, you get a plane shift everyone to the uh, with the ship to the plane of brass. Yeah. To the uh, city of brass, with plane of fire. Because they're east. All right, cool. Can you make that intelligence check to me to see if you go to the wrong plane? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> uh, intelligence. That's a dirty twenty. Nice. Hell yeah, Danny! You hook it up, punch it, plane shift to the plane uh, to the city of brass, and yeah, easily enough to find the heap. No one else, no other ships are pulled in there. There's plenty of space for you to dock. Huh. It really is a heap. All Jump right. Off. Okay. All right. No, what, uh, enough with the insulting. It's the place a good name. Okay. It fits the place. <laughs> uh, I'm not. It's not an insult. It, it rolls, makes it, sense. It, 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 Credit to Otto, it rolls off the tongue nicely. Uh, we can't is... all be from the plane of heroic death, okay? Some of us have to come from a scrapyard. Oh, I guess so. That's true. I'll You're hop right. off the ship and try and find the rest of the heap crew. <laughs> yeah, Roy's there. He's like, what's all this talk about heroic death? Uh, Roy! from Easgard's on the crew now. It's a whole thing. Oi. Oh. Howdy there, mate. Oh. He like looks for. He starts looking for a giant because that's most yeah, of the people big, who live in buff, Eastgard. Cool dude. Instead, you get this pale, it's the bloodless guy. Who? Bloodish now. Literally no. able to be knocked over by a feather with one yeah. hit point. Uh, right, I can fix that real quick. Look what I learned. And he kind of um, wipes the, sp- the sweat off his brow, touches it to his chest, and where the old uh, carapace um, was, uh, sort of ice forms um, into spiky armor. Um, let me cast uh, Armor of Agathis at the uh, okay. that was nice. cool. first level. Um, it just hell immediately yeah, melts love Armor of Agathis. Of <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice. It's refreshing. It's magically uh, conjured That's ice. Cool. It feels really good. Um, is Otto around? We gotta talk to him about what the fees look like for you guys working on the job for us. Wow. Is this what it's like to be on the other side? You sure you want to talk to him? Didn't you just do a whole like, yay, we're free. Ooh. He does like a little dance. I start playing some music. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Pull out the harmonica. Don't encourage him. <laughs> He's a good dancer. I don't know what to do. Like, I am a good dancer. Everyone always says I'm a good dancer, Danny. Why are you always trying to put me down? <laughs> Let the man live his life, all right? Hey, we should go back to the place right, where my so, sibling lives. <laughs> Otto, Otto, definitely. Yeah, that's that's we we're doing, we're we're doing that. I'll get him. All right. Oh my God. He goes off. Comes back. Otto and Zax in tow. Well, well, well. <laughs> it's good to see all of you again so soon. Far sooner than I expected. I don't take it that you regret your decision, Danny. 
No, uh, in a <laughs> shocking turn of events, we're actually here with the job for you. <gasps> well, fantastic. Finally, I'm going to make some damn money off of this ship. Danny will say nothing and just give him the most deadpan expression. <laughs> it's really sad if this is going to be how he gets how how this, how he profits off of this ship. Uh, Caleb, Sorry. we got the blueprints <laughs> you're working on, we'll, and I kind of show him the plans for integrating Emmy into the ship and like kind of explain. Sophia is not saying it all because I don't know how engineering works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I good, run you're him good. through the like. You're gonna do the yeah. the arcano something, techno babble, something, yeah. techno babble, yeah, yeah, yeah. techno babble, techno Caleb, babble. Price, price, price. Caleb hands it to him. <laughs> Otto opens the like journal, looks at it, and then hands it to Zach. Zach starts to pour over. You explain. Caleb explains as well, like what needs to be done. Um, uh, Otto just kind of like surveys you, smiling as all of this happens, uh, and then like you guys finish explaining. Zax finishes reading, closes the book, hands it up to Otto, goes. Uh, yeah. uh, Otto uh, <laughs> Are goes. There words in that. <laughs> well, that's definitely doable. We'll make it a priority and get it done as fast as you can. Uh, we'll put. I'll make sure that every able-bodied member of the heap is on it. Uh, that'll run you fifteen thousand gold. Yep. All right, little one. I think you forget, Otto, oh. that um, I happen to know exactly how much you pay every single member of the heap, so I think we can both come to a slightly lower price point on that across the board. Um, I would... And I think that you happen to know that you no longer get the employee discount here. I don't have to get the employee discount to know 15, that you are gold. vastly overcharging for the services that you're applying. Danny, Danny, Danny you I'm can't be charismatic to, to like, a guy you learned your let charisma me haggle. from. I never get to haggle. <laughs> You're ha- but you're, right, you're, you're using ahead, business haggle, tactics. To haggle. You're I using business tactics from the, against the guy who taught you the you business maybe, tactics. Maybe he'll be proud. Who knows? <laughs> Go ahead, make a roll, Danny. Yeah, you're right. Maybe, maybe he'll be, be proud, proud enough to increase the price. Who the fuck knows how auto works? <laughs> What's the? What am I rolling? <laughs> Finally, a worthy opponent. That's adding a persuasion. five thousand gold surcharge persuasion? for the argument. <laughs> Sweet, I have a plus six persuasion. That's a dirty twenty. <laughs> he goes. Well. The price is the price. In order to get everyone on this in the speed that you suggest, we're going to be taking, putting down a lot of other jobs in order to get it done. But slack could be taken up, perhaps, if there's uh, something you could do. I mean, of course you wouldn't have your ship, so I don't know how you'd even accomplish it. But if you were able to, then, or maybe perhaps you could take your ship and then come back when we get started. Um, or you can find the money elsewhere. But if you want to work something out, I'm sure I can scrounge up a a suitably appropriate effort to compensate for the rest of the charge that you can't cover. Kiana, how much gold do you have? 4,000 something. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got like 1,500. I have 2,800. Okay, we're like oh, halfway still there. Like, I've got, uh... Yeah. So you just need to do a 7,500 uh, gold job. Mm-hmm. I've got a... I if, like having say, 4K Or you need to ask one of your rich friends. <laughs> like, you have... See if Hira has a much cushier job that'll pay much better. Of course they have rich friends. Although we can sort of Why shop around on contracts. Friends. You think you could enlighten <laughs> us as to what job you might have in mind before we make any final decisions? Or is that information also need to know? <laughs> oh... I don't talk before I agree to the job. You're not a member of the employees of here at the Heap anymore, Danny. You don't get those perks. You want the job? That was not a perk that was ever afforded to anyone working at Heap. Oi, boss, boss. I, I could use the... What? Uh, I could use uh, stretching on my legs. Uh, let's, let's do a job. It'll be fine. Come on. I mean, I'm always team do a job, but I don't, we've done some jobs for Otto in the past. The rest of the crew's not liked. I'm not going to drag them into something they don't want to do. <sighs> all right, all right. I, I guess... believe it's worthy to this end. I will I will also remind the crew that our last job, which required us going into the Nine Hells, uh, that was a 10,000 gold job, I believe. So mm. we'll be hopefully tasked with something a little less dangerous than going to the Nine Hells. <laughs> All I know is that lots of people go into the nine hells. Lots of people come out of the nine hells. That's at this point, it's a bit overrated, you know. I don't think I don't um, think the latter part of the statement is correct. Um, I've heard things. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I so fear the player I'm inclined different. to say, do the job. Uh, my only concern yeah. is if... Yeah. Are we saving time if we do a job that needs the ship and then bring the ship in for repairs as opposed to like just taking it to Maxim or Hira now? Or do we think we're okay with Unless we need having the, the ship, ship? The job? I, I think we can leave Having to do the job will definitely add time onto your thing. But um, it would also add time to have uh, Maxim work on it basically alone or Hira uh, not have anybody to work on it except for our crew. Yeah. Um, I think I think still... In the, well, did Otto give... Uh, a time estimate for how long it would take. No, he's not giving you anything until you agree <sighs> to it. Can I do an insight check on how much he's what? trying to screw us? <laughs> but I do feel like Danny would know how long this kind of repair would take. So do I have an inclination as to how long the it's actual... It would take a week. It would take a week, okay. And okay. do I have an inclination of how long it would take if it was just me and Caleb or if like we had Maxim, me and Caleb working on it? I assume more than a week. I... Oh, hold on, actually. I think I actually have a note on this. Wait a second. A week might be wrong. Hold on. Because if it's pure manpower, just like... It's it's actually manpower. It goes... It, I, I'm wrong. It goes down with the... I have to find the note where I had it. Uh, it goes down with the um, number of people you have working on it. So I believe it's actually 100 hours of work. Hmm. 100 labor hours. By the way, adding in the slotty brain gem, same deal. It's also 100 hours of work and costs a shit ton of gold. Oh. I but you said no way. but you said that's feasible uh, something that one person could do is just going to take one hundred labor hours of doing so. Yeah, hmm. I might have been mixing something up. So you got to shielding. So, Danny can accomplish it. It's still going to take some resources. It's going to take a little time and a little money. The main thing is getting the ship ready for the AI. It's a hundred man hours, and it's the fifteen thousand gold. But a so hundred man hours heap, with a large crew. That but the watch crew is actually only a few days because yeah. okay. multiple Probably of them less. can work eight hours a day at a time. So if we so conceivably if have... did a job that took like a day or two, it would still yeah. be faster with the heap crew than if we took like than if we bailed out now, went to Hira, had all the money we needed, or went to Maxim and had yeah. a much smaller crew working or went to on Maxim. It. That's what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, because Maxim. What, three, yeah, three people working currently is twenty four hours done at the same time, so it would only take like four days if even just three people were working on it. Correct. If we get back in time, you know, Danny can also contribute to that. Okay. Yeah, he if says the whole heap. Not all the heap are like. <laughs> some of these, some of the heap members are going to count as like two are going to count as like one okay. person because they are yeah. not all like experts. On, like Roy is not. Roy is not the same as Caleb in terms right. of man hours, right? Mm -hmm. But yes, you can imagine it would be about twenty four hours a day that would be worked on, and thus it would be done in about four days. A little over, yeah. If uh, who put math in my D and D game, Jesus. If one person was doing it at eight hours a day, it would take them twelve and a half days uh, total to get the hundred yeah, hours of man hour done. So if you just, just you can have that with with Caleb and someone helping him, of course. Right. But. Right. So just the base number of people we'd already have working on it that takes it down to about a week, and then any number of extra people you add to that. Uh, pre on the assumption that each individual member of the heap is not going to be able to work as efficiently as you know our resident geniuses, uh, that would still, I'd argue, you could probably get that done in like three days if you really pushed. But um, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm assuming the heap has more than like five people that work in it. <laughs> I think then if we, even if we still had to do a job for auto, um, that would require faster. the Prospero. The heap would still, yeah. be, it would faster. still be faster than the two weeks it would take one person to do it. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I'm inclined to say. Or the one week. Knowing, uh, sorry, I, I needed us to clarify that timeline because my brain, like, all of the decisions that Danny's going to make regarding what we do with the ship pretty much hinges on how long will it take us to do these things because the cost is going to be the same no matter where we gotcha. go, more or less. So if we're doing a job for auto Taking the ship does not make this equivalent in length to going to Hero or going to Maxim, then I would, Danny would say, like, I think we should do the job to the crew. It is, mm -hmm. yeah, it's in fact probably still a little bit faster. Okay. Uh, time is really of the essence here. Right. We don't know anything about our enemies, but we know we got a lot of work to do. I think we got to save time where we can. I think we should do a job. Oh, I'm in. Yeah. yeah. All right, Otto. We should definitely All get right, it in yeah. writing for how much of this 
the the job is compensating for, and then how much we'll have to pay afterwards. You think I'm not going to get Otto to, in writing, put down the terms of this job? Well, uh, as long as it had been volunteered. Otto Otto has a job that will cover the entire cost of the operation. Yes, that works. Oh, we get to keep our gold. So it's a fifteen thousand gold worth adventure. Well, we have to remember he was definitely upcharging us, so maybe it's only like a seven thousand. He's definitely not upcharging. How bad could it be? Um, or, or alternatively, not upcharging. alternatively, fifteen thousand. That's three spell jammers, you guys. Ooh. We're Ooh. not. It's three separate ships. We have Wait, one. Guys... Our ship is so cool, guys. We don't need more of it. We just need to make it back. I just like the idea of a fleet of spell jammers. Prespera. You could make. <laughs> oh my god! What if you make the bike a spell jammer? I we thought it's like spell jammers, but we know we all laughed at my ship. let's make the adamantine city a, a giant spell jammer idea earlier, but I feel like we're just getting closer and closer to that being the solution. Uh, <laughs> There's lots of different spell jammers. They can be, they go awful. faster the smaller they are in general. So the bike the would actually be a great has, option like, for breaking through fast. to the next planescape because it's so small, it could go so fast. And if it goes wrong, it can only hold one person at that big group. I love that we're, we're talking about all these possibilities and none of us has been like, well, we could get Davy in another spell jammer because he doesn't have his and he's really well, sad. That's we got to hold out hope that we'll find his spell jammer. Okay, to bring us back but into then he could have two to bring us back into session for a second here. Um, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I mean, we got to put all our terms out in writing, but we're willing to do a job in exchange for the repairs and the manpower. What's the gig? All right. If that's the <laughs> case, <out> next time. <laughs> let's talk details. Welcome back to the heat, Danny. For the first time ever, it kind of feels good to be back in the heat. <laughs> I don't Wait. like how he said that, but okay. Also, Guys, I came to this. Be. I joined this podcast so I can get away uh -huh. from engineering. I didn't expect to be doing fucking trade <laughs> studies. <laughs> I was a film major. This is incomprehensible to me. <laughs> the good hey, news is you also have the slot brain gem, podcast? which I forgot you did. So that's <laughs> also going to save you having to go to um, limbo and fight a uh, hordes of slot so instead yeah. of going to limbo, i would love to not have to do that we're gonna do whatever this fucking shit auto wants us to do <laughs> yeah which is actually good because yeah you trade that job for one pretty pretty useful actually in terms of pacing the season and i get to keep All my right. four thousand gold yes thank you everyone for joining us god i didn't even sign us off thank you everyone for joining us <laughs> uh the hot start is on we are uh we are in it now i can't wait to see how everything happens in a next rare week return to form job rolling with difficulty is heat. doing another job for Otto in the on the second episode on, on the second episode. Episode. hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, and you guys are going back to hell no, we'll go somewhere new. um i don't actually i don't promise anything okay you'll see all right oh, uh God. anyway i have a thank job you for joining for us incarcerate. we're very excited to be back <laughs> all right Thanks so much for listening. We will catch you all next time. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Rolling with Difficulty, the adventures of the crew of the Peraspera. We'll be back next week with another thrilling episode, but if you miss us in the meantime, be sure to check out the Rolling with Difficulty Discord server for more fun conversations with other fans. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us and leave a review on your preferred podcast platform. And if you really enjoyed the show, consider becoming a patron for exclusive benefits like monthly hangs with the cast, special art and articles, and more. Links to all that and other fun things can be found in the show notes below. Thank you again for listening, and we'll catch you out on the Astral Sea.